2017 was an unforgettable year for the Pac-12. Touchdown! Unbelievable! The kick is away. The Trojans have won the game! Two players dominated. You can't stop number 14. Where is the ball? It's in Stanford. In the end, one team reigned supreme. USC Pac-12 champions. But that was last year. And 2018 poses a new challenge, even for those at the top. As of right now, we definitely have unfinished business. Let's get to work and let's go have a great year. We have done the right things and we have worked our tails off. We're just ready to get going, excited to get back to work. It's a new season, everybody's kind of got a fresh slate. It's opening night here for football on the Pac-12 Network. It's real simple, we're trying to win the Pac-12. We had a great summer and I think we should really build from that. Now, let's go find out how good we are. Mario Cristobal, the air is about to begin here in Eugene, Oregon at Autzen Stadium. Kickoff week presented by Opus Bank. A little action coming out west. The Bowling Green Falcons at Autzen Stadium. It's rocking for number 24, Oregon's home opener here on Pac-12 Network. Along with Anthony Heron and Lewis Johnson. Glad you're with us. Roxy Bernstein with you from Autzen Stadium. A lot of excitement, a lot of buzz. Mario Cristobal, yes, he's the third coach for the Ducks in three years. So Oregon's been through a number of lead guys here recently. They really have. And it's rare that for a program as prominent as Oregon, you go through a coaching change and still have continuity. But that's precisely what Mario Cristobal is able to provide after moving on after only one season from Willie Taggart. Mario Cristobal was elevated to the head coaching position. There was actually a petition that circulated throughout the players, and one of the players who was leading that charge to sign the petition was Justin Herbert. Missed five games last season, but returns this year as one of the most sought-after prospects in the country. The NFL scouts are drooling over him. He's going to be eligible in 2019. A multi-dimensional talent that can carve you up from the pocket with a delivery that's smooth as silk. So one of the premier quarterbacks in college football Justin Herbert, his junior season about to begin. Number 24, Oregon. And Bowling Green next on Pac-12 Network. The Ducks taking the field. It is rocking here at Austin Stadium kickoff week presented by Opus Bank. Number 24, Oregon. And Bowling Green about to start their season here in Eugene on a beautiful Saturday evening as we send it down to Lewis Johnson. All right, well, Coach, after months of meetings and practices, you're finally on the field. Describe the feeling and the expectation here for your team in game one. Well, it's time to go to work. You know, they've earned the opportunity to play well today, but now it's time to go do it. So I think they're focused, they're ready. Let's, uh, let's go find out. Justin Herbert, a quarterback who has really worked hard on his body to be even stronger. What do you look for from him today in terms of leadership and performance on the field? The next natural step for a quarterback and a leader of your football team, you know, to be not only a vocal leader, continue to lead by example, make the plays that are expected of him, and every now and then, you know what, make a bigger one. Absolutely. Congratulations on all that, and good luck today, okay? Thank you, sir. Roxy, Coach Cristobal did a great job of standing still for 45 <laughs> seconds. I can tell you he is ready to go. <laughs> That's probably the longest he has stood still all week. Yeah, I would think so. He's been waiting for this opportunity. I covered him a number of games when he was at FIU. He got that first head coaching opportunity. That was not an easy situation that he took over. He was able to breathe new life into that program. And anytime I've been around him in the years since then, you can tell he's been urging himself, preparing himself to get another shot at having the big whistle, and he's ready for it today. Six seasons at Florida International for Mario Cristobal. On the other side, third year for Bowling Green head coach Mike Jinks. He's formerly spent time at Texas Tech, and he's an engaging, excitable guy. It was great to spend some time with him and his staff yesterday. And they're just as excited as anybody to play some football today. And keep in mind, this is how last year started for the Oregon Ducks. Tony Brooks James. I'm not sure if that was sped up by our crack video <laughs> staff or not, because he can absolutely fly when the rock's in his hands. And Oregon will receive the kickoff as Mario Cristobal, former national champion from the University of Miami. A tremendous offensive lineman. Probably got the butterflies going. I think a little so. more so than, than normal <laughs> for a game. Now he's done this before as a head coach, but not at a program like Oregon. 
Nate Needham kicking off for the Falcons. The transfer from Youngstown State. And we are underway. Season has started for Bowling Green in Oregon as Brooks James hit and brought down shy of the 20-yard line. Outstanding coverage from Hassan Belton for Bowling Green. There is Justin Herbert, the numbers, and it was such a huge difference when he was healthy as opposed to when he was out of the lineup for the Ducks last year. It certainly was, and part of the reason they're going to operate a little bit differently offensively this season is it'll provide a little more deception. We'll get into it today for the defense, where they can't necessarily tee off on where Justin Herbert may be by the time the ball's getting handed off. So the 6'6 junior from right down the road went to Sheldon High School here in Eugene. Cam McCormick in motion. Trouble with the snap. Herbert recovers, and it's incomplete. Oregon looking for a flag. Tried to get it to Dylan Mitchell, and there is a late penalty marker in there on the play. Pretty clear hold. Pass interference. Defense number 55. Spot foul. Automatic first down. Mark Duddy, our referee today here at Onsen Stadium. Kobe Coleman not allowed to just reach out and grab a receiver while he's in the midst of his route. Out to the 21 for Herbert in the pistol look. And here is the handoff to Tony Brooks James. And he's stacked up after a couple. Good pursuit by the Bowling Green front. They'll bring up second down is Colby Coleman in there on the tackle. Along with Josh Croslin, a couple of sophomores for this young but talented Bowling Green football team. Herbert on the move, on second down, looking deep, throwing deep. Johnny Johnson can't hit off. Johnson had a step, had to wait, and just couldn't hang on. And it's third down for the Ducks. It's good play design by Marcus Arroyo, offensive coordinator here from Oregon. Moved the pocket slightly. Allows the ability for Justin Herbert to have a cleaner pocket. And certainly a well-thrown ball. Johnny Johnson's got to come down with that one. Third and nine for Oregon. Good protection for Herbert. Over the middle. And it's through the hands again. This time it's Jalen Red who can't hang on. No, can't put this drive on Herbert. No. <laughs> Pass protection appeared to be really sound here. Bowling Green only rushed four. A little twist stunt inside. Protection holds up. Guns one over the middle through the hands of Jalen Red that time after the previous snap. Johnny Johnson couldn't come up with it. And there appeared to be, you know, guys look a little amped up right now. Even Herbert, you know, he kind of dropped a good snap on the first play and picked it up. Blake Maymon, the punter, the junior from Thousand Oaks. And it's a low, wobbly kick that takes an Oregon bounce. And trying to bust it outside. Good coverage by the Ducks on the return. Marcus Milton for Bowling Green. But the Falcons will have decent field position to start their day offensively. That was huge for Bowling Green defensively because it's a new system they're working this year. New defensive coordinator was brought in in Carl Perlini. But now this is really viewed as the strength of their team with the offense stepping onto the field. Quarterback Jared Dagey, the sophomore from Lubbock, Texas. His brother Seth, former quarterback for Texas Tech, and now the receivers coach for Bowling Green as Mario Cristobal's defense goes to work. Dagey last year made five starts as a true freshman. And here's the handoff, and on first down, it's Andrew Clare. Justin Hollins on the tackle, the impact players. Let's take a look when Oregon's defense is on the field. Well, Jalen Jeltz is one of the top returning defensive linemen in the entire country. PFF College has him graded out. He's top returning pass rusher in the Pac-12, and Troy Dye playing the inside linebacker second year in a row. PFF College had him top five in both run defense and pass defense. Empty backfield as Claire goes split out after gaining four in the first down carry. Deggy has some space to run. Goes out of bounds and goes into Oregon territory. First down, Bowling Green. Eight yards. There's an attempt at an inside move here made by Jelks. They were able to block it up. That's what provided the running lane in Deggy. 
in this air raid offense. Not necessarily a guy who wants to take off and run, but he's mobile enough to hurt you with his legs. Diggy last year completing 64% of his passes. For nearly 1,400 yards. Andrew Clare, the ball carrier, hit behind the line, breaking tackles. And it's only a loss of one, but it could have been worse. As Oregon seemed to have him trapped deep behind the line. As Kalana Apelu there for the Ducks. As well as Troy Dye. Andrew Clare, really talented young ball carrier. Started for them as a true freshman last year. Racked up big yards. Back in midfield, second down for Bowling Green. And Oregon gets a timeout just before the snaps of confusion defensively for the Ducks, and they take a timeout. Timeout, Oregon, their first charge timeout of the half. This will be a Kickoff week is presented by Opus Bank, the official bank of the Pac-12 Conference. Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. And by Taco Bell's Nacho Fries, this summer's tastiest blockbuster. A spectacular Saturday evening in the Willamette Valley. Kickoff week presented by Opus Bank on Pac-12 Network. Bowling Green and number 24, Oregon scoreless. And for the Falcons and Mike Jinks, it'll be second down and just about 12 from right near midfield for Jared Dagey, the sophomore. So Oregon took a timeout. Claire through the line, breaking tackles. Get to the second level and right near a first down. That was impressive running by the sophomore from St. Louis. He's got a good combination of burst and power. He, he runs with good leverage because he's built somewhat low to the ground. Going quickly on third and short, and Dagey going straight ahead, first down, Bowling Green. Good decision. They'll be able to alternate tempos. Deggy, even though he's only a true sophomore, he's been around the air raid for quite a while. His older brother, Seth Deggy, who's now the wide receiver coach of Bowling Green, he played at Texas Tech. He had a nice career there. And Jarrett's been around this offense for years. Bryson Denley checks in at running back for Bowling Green. Play action for Deggy. And coming back, catch is made. Scott Miller near another first down, should have it for the Falcons. We're seeing some more t pace and tempo here. The Falcons offense. Miller's a player who's one of the leading receivers in Falcons history. Senior third team all Mac performer last year. First down, Bowling Green. This is Denley on the carry. And some running room down inside the 20. Brought down by Apello and Hollins for the Ducks. This was an offense, Anthony, when Dagey took over last year, they found a really good rhythm to end the season as Bowling Green over the final four games of the year averaged 35 points a game. He started a couple of games earlier in the year. They wanted to redshirt him. He was just performing too well in practice. They burned his red shirt. Then he got injured. But once he came back in, he lit it up. Apello coming off the corner. Blitz picked up for the end zone. Dagey's pass, and it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Derek Putevong, a senior from Columbus, Ohio. As Dagey taking a shot there for the end zone is in second down. It was a nice pickup by Andrew Clare back there. Oregon ended up bringing a delayed blitz. Clare allowed Dagey the time to step up into the pocket. Third and short for Bowling Green. Just inside the 20. Split backs as Claire and Denley are flanking Daigie. Daigie throwing down the sideline and it's out of bounds. Quinton Morris, the intended target. Well defended by Diamador Lenore from Oregon and it's fourth down. And the pressure was well done by Lamar Winston coming off the edge because they did the little RPO fake. Winston didn't bite on that mesh point. Figured on third and long, Daigie's going to keep it. On well, third and short, Daigie was going to keep it, and he got the hit. Nate Needham for a field goal. This will be a 36-yarder. Out of the hold of Matt Naranjo. 
Trying to give Bowling Green the early lead. High snap, Narancho gets it down. The kick from Needham is good. And Bowling Green on the board first. Thirty-six yard kick by Nate Needham and Bowling Green with the early lead is Jordan Scott. The outstanding defensive lineman for Oregon was getting looked at by the medical staff and we're looking at the right hand of Jordan Scott. And the sophomore was a freshman All-American last year and. He's a key factor up front defensively for the Ducks. He's a physical specimen right, at three hundred and thirty pounds and that's even lighter than when he came in. He came in at about three sixty five. Can do backflips. He's just got this ground based power where he can put force into blockers. Very difficult to move at the point of attack. Early lead for Mike Jinks and Bowling Green. As the Falcons went just 2 and 10 last year, they were 2 and 6 in the MAC. Their wins coming against Kent State and Miami of Ohio. And a lot of struggles on defense, which we'll get into as the game progresses. And they changed the entire coaching staff on that side of the football. So trouble with the breeze blowing across here in Eugene. It's in the 70s, just a beautiful night, but there is a little bit of a wind here. Never rains, but the wind does blow <laughs> at Austin Stadium. 15 mile per hour wind. Knocking the ball off the tee, and now they'll have to hold it for Needham on this kickoff. Tony Brooks James from the goal line. And Brooks James bringing it out. Trying to get to the edge. And he gets to the 25, where he's brought down by a gang of Falcons as we take a look at the impact players from Wendy's when Oregon has the football. 15 of the last 17 years, Oregon's had an all-conference center. Jake Hansen, one of the best in the business right now. And Dylan Mitchell, a monster group of wide receivers with playmaking ability. He's the one I think they'll look to in big situations. The Ducks have won six straight season openers, and they have won 13 consecutive home openers. The pistol, Herbert, rolling out toward the sideline. It is Mitchell with the catch. And out of bounds right near the marker. That's part of what the pistol provides you. You can have some of those downhill run tendencies, almost like the quarterbacks under center, but still turn your back to the defense, get that boot action going. Second down. Again, the pistol look. Herbert gives to Tony Brooks James, and he's swallowed up, shy of a first down. Roland Walder there on the defensive end for Bowling Green, along with Kyle Jr. As Kyle Jr., the son of former NFL Pro Bowler, longtime NFL player, EJ Jr. Third down for Oregon. Just over five minutes in. Herbert slings it out, and it's broken up. Tried to get it to Johnny Johnson. And outstanding coverage over there. Jamari Bozeman. Breaking up the pass, and it's fourth down. Also, Clint Stevens there for Bowling Green. And there was an opportunity. He was open enough. Herbert just delivered it a little bit too far out in front of Johnny Johnson. So Clint Stevens, the senior from West Palm Beach, Florida. Coming back a couple of years ago, tore his ACL. Number two for Bowling Green has to leave the game for one play due to equipment violation. So Stevens has to come off for one play. There is some sort of equipment violation, and that's something the officials are going to be paying extra close attention to this year. They're really going to enforce the rules as laid out for the uniforms, which are pretty well documented in the rule book. That's the point of emphasis for the officials this year. Blake Maymon, his second punt, and a fair catch made for called for by Marcus Milton and Bowling Green with a three nothing lead has the football and let's take a look at our Delta faucet keys to containment. The Ducks today on defense are going to have to harass the pass. You don't want to have to bring additional blitzers against the air raid every time they get after the quarterback that front three and front five will need to get it done. 
and populate the pond. Need to make sure they have all kinds of jerseys swarming to the football. And once they get there, try to rake it away. Come up with takeaways on the defensive side once you pursue. Bowling Green with the football at their own 27-yard line. Jared Dagey. And a handoff. And not much running room for Andrew Clare up the middle. Troy Dye on the tackle, who's led Oregon in tackles in each of the last two seasons. So Andrew Clare, who originally committed to Iowa, Anthony, mm -hmm. but the Hawkeyes wanted him to play corner. And he wanted to play running back, and Bowling Green gave him that opportunity as Claire makes the catch out of the backfield and runs for a first down. Nice catch and run from Andrew Claire, who, like Anthony Heron, could have been an Iowa Hawkeye. You were an Iowa Hawkeye. He could have been. Yeah, an opportunity. I got to say, he looks like a running back to me. Everything I saw from last season's film and certainly what we're seeing so far in today's game. So you're saying Kirk Ferentz got it wrong. He might have been an excellent defensive back as well. <laughs> There's the politically correct answer for your <laughs> former coach. Not wanting to throw him under the bus. Third and short. Deggy. Flushed out. And going into a slide and making the catch. Scott Miller first down Bowling Green. And there was pressure. Austin Filiu did a nice job with an inside move. So he's chasing Deggy outside the pocket. Deggy on the move delivers a very accurate football. Miller makes a nice grab down on his knees. Second catch for Miller. Falcons out across the 40. Good protection for Deggy. Goes underneath and Miller takes a shot, but hangs on to the football. Ugo Chuku Amati levels him. We saw that coming the entire way. So what this offense does is like a tennis match. They threaten the numbers one way, then threaten the numbers the opposite way. Amadi comes in. That's what you want to see in today's football. Puts the shoulder into him. Still a physical hit. Doesn't pick up the flag. Second down, seven from the 45. Here's Claire straight ahead. Nothing there. He runs into Gary Baker. Also Jalen Jelts. The box count will be key for Deggie when facing Oregon's defense. So just like we see from Washington State over the years in that air raid offense. He has the ability to check it, look for a run opportunity when the box is lighter. If that front seven seems like they're in more of a pass coverage set. Bowling Green, two of three on third down. Just past the midway point of this first quarter. Deggie. Over the middle, it's Miller again, first down into Oregon territory. Nick Pickett with the tackle. When they bring pressure like they did off the edge from Hollins, pass protection holds up long enough. Clean pocket for Deggie on the in-cutting route, delivers a very accurate pass to Miller. 15 yards, Deggie five for seven, and running straight ahead, breaking tackles, but they blow the play dead, and there's a penalty marker down. So Bryson Oregon. Denley was off to the races. Oregon was running in late off the sideline. Offside, defense number 90. Five-yard penalty, first down. Drayton Carlberg was offside. Jim Levitt, who stayed with the coaching change. Willie Taggart tried to get him to go to Florida State, but Willie... Taggart obviously couldn't recruit Jim Levitt, who wanted to stay here in Eugene, who did outstanding work last year improving Oregon's defense. And sticking around with Mario Cristobal. It's on the ground. Bryson Denley for Bowling Green. There is Jim Levitt, who was spent time in Florida as the head coach at South Florida, also with the defensive coordinator, came to Oregon from Colorado. He's been around Mario Cristobal a lot over the years. That's part of why he had the comfort level to be willing to stay here. At the 29, first down, Bowling Green. Through the line. Inside the 20, down to the 15 is Bryson Denley. It's Justin Hollins. 
finally tripped him up, but an impressive drive keeps on rolling for Bowling Green. And here now we're starting to see the ball carriers from the Falcons run through contact. Some missed tackles from the Ducks. 14 more for the Falcons are already approaching 100 yards of total offense. And a good balance 54 on the ground, 41 through the air. Deggie to the outside. Quinton Morris brought down by Justin Holland, shy of the first down and shy of the five. It'll bring up second and short. The entire defense was slanting in that direction. Coverage rolled that way as well. But again, more missed tackles, a few additional yards after the catch. It's now the ninth play of the drive. Andrew Clare comes back in and running back for the Falcons. Presley moats the tight end as Daigie for the end zone. Touchdown, Bowling Green, Scott Miller. Six yard touchdown pass, Jared Daigie to Scott Miller. And Bowling Green silencing the Autzen Stadium crowd. True sophomore Texan, he fit one into a tight window between a couple of Ducks defenders. Nate Needham on for the extra point. Kicked in a championship game when he was at the FCS level at Youngstown State, and Needham makes it 10 0 Bowling Green as the Falcons go 10 plays, 73 yards. A six yard touchdown pass to Scott Miller. 10 0 Bowling Green. Our Buick scoring drive as the Falcons go 10 plays, 73 yards. Jared Dakey to Scott Miller, who's enjoying himself right now on the Bowling Green sideline. Why shouldn't he? They're up 10 0 yeah. to number 24, Oregon. He certainly should be. I'd be having fun if I was him right now. Dagey, seven of nine through the air. And Miller already with five catches. And Mike Jinks and his team silencing a full house at Austin Stadium. Well, Jinks certainly not surprised that his offense is able to move the ball. He seems extremely confident with that side. He may be pleasantly surprised with the way his defense has shut Oregon down so far. Tony Brooks James from inside the five. Brooks James upended, gets back to the 25 as we send it down to Lewis Johnson. Well, you can just imagine after that uh, last score by Bowling Green that things got a little tense over here on the Oregon sideline. Of course, we were talking with coach defensive coordinator uh, Keith Hayward yesterday talking about plugging up those run gaps and giving great effort to try and tackle. Of course, those were maybe two elements that allowed Bowling Green to score. So he was there, but afterwards it was his offensive linebacker, Justin Hollins, who really stepped to his teammates. He called everybody over and he read them the riot act about how they needed to get this thing back in order early here defensively. And offensively, Lewis, they got to find some semblance of a rhythm. And they do on the ground in a nice first down run. That was Travis Dye, the younger brother of Troy Dye, just shy of a first down, a gain of nine for the true freshman on his first college carry. Now we see Oregon going to their Ducks tempo. We're in the Oregon yellow today as Herbert keeps. Herbert has space. Down the sideline, Justin Herbert steps out of bounds inside the 30. Terrific play call for Marcus Arroyo. And I assume this would be like the Audubon at this point. After a big game, they'll get right back over the football here. 37 yards for Herbert. Excellent read at the mess point. Confusion, Herbert goes down. Loses a couple of yards. And that's where, with the pistol, things can get a little bit dicey sometimes because when you're accustomed to, as, as Justin Herbert's had throughout his career, the back normally being offset it's an easier read for you you know where he's going to come from but also a much easier read for the defense when the back is behind you and neutral in the pistol you have to be more conscious of which way his footwork goes second and 12 Herbert dumps it off and behind the line Cam McCormick has dropped another loss for the Ducks isn't it interesting how when you hit a big play and you're on the move offensively not just the momentum part of it not just that intangible but tangibly the defense has more of an opportunity to get set when you have a play that takes you off rhythm offensively. Hassan Belton making the last play defensively for Bowling Green. Third down, 14 for Oregon. Late getting on the field, Jacob Breeland, the tight end. 
The officials hold it up briefly to allow Bowling Green to match and some confusion. And Oregon burns a timeout. And the crowd getting a little frustrated. Yeah. Well, the procedural aspect of things, especially where you hit a couple of big plays on the drive, that's not what you want to be the Achilles heel that slows you up. Well, for the Oregon Ducks, certainly a changing of the guard here, but last year Mario Cristobal part of this Oregon team and really was a tale of two seasons. It certainly was, especially when you factor in the health and lack thereof for Justin Herbert. Royce Freeman, career Pac-12 leader in the rushing touchdowns, program leader in rushing yards as well. And now Mario Cristobal taking the program over. And here's what things look like with Justin Herbert and without. Especially, you look at that points category. Average just about 50 points with him. Without him, only 15 points per game. Slight difference. Sounds similar. Third down for Herbert. Good pocket. Down the sideline in the leaping attempt. Johnny Johnson can't hang on. Covered by Clint Stevens. That's a tougher catch than some of the other drops, but that's still a drop. Johnny Johnson goes airborne, but still... Ball hits him in both hands. So this is a big time program. He's a big time talent. The team is down by two scores. These are the plays the Oregon Ducks skill position guys need to begin to make. Fourth and 14. And Oregon will go at the Bowling Green 33. C.J. Verdell checks in at running back. Herbert. Over the middle for the end zone. Touchdown. Jalen Red, 33 yards. The Ducks are on the board and a strike from Herbert. I mean, on fourth in Portland, Justin Herbert with a clean pocket delivers a strike to Red. He couldn't have gone out and handed the football to him any more accurately. Perfect pass from Herbert. Jalen Red. Second career touchdown catch for the sophomore from Rancho Cucamonga in Southern California. Adam Stack, the extra point. 10 7 Bowling Green, but the Ducks are on the board. Justin Herbert engineers the drive and gets it to Red. Hiring was always a huge challenge. Endless hours on job sites with not a lot to show for. Then I found ZipRecruiter. They figured out hiring. I post my job. And they send me the right people because their technology is smart. Go to ZipRecruiter to post over 100 job boards with one click. Then easily select the best candidates from your dashboard. ZipRecruiter often sends me the right person in 24 hours. The smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter, official hiring partner of the Pac-12 Conference. Try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Pac-12. So how about that in fourth and 14? And Herbert throwing a perfect pass to Jalen Red and... For Oregon, I think everybody's breathing a sigh of relief now. Well, and watch as Red comes from the slot, and when he begins to make the move towards the inside, he's not initially open, but then as the ball comes out of Justin Herbert's hands, he can tell that Red is going to bypass the inside defender, that safety, because of the pedal. Those are the things that are more next level about his abilities from within the pocket, to see the spacing of the safety and from a depth standpoint, know where he has to throw the ball. Noah Dahl kicking for Oregon. And on the return, and a huge hit, upended. Ravion Hargrove was level. Very clean pocket here for Herbert. Protection holds up, steps into it. As soon as he sees the back of Marcus Milton, he knows he's got a sense for where he can deliver the ball. It's part of what makes him so special. A lot of guys have strong arms. Guys are mobile at 6'6", 235. But he's got a level of touch and anticipation to the way he can pass the football. He's not just a thrower like you'll see in these spread offenses sometimes. Worst field position. The Bowling Green has started a drive on thus far in this first quarter. Great kickoff coverage tackle, by the way, by Javon Holland. And on the ground, it is Andrew Clare for Bowling Green. Troy Dye's looking kind of feisty early in the game here, which I don't mind. 
You're Mike linebacker in this system. It's his second year being an inside linebacker. He hadn't done it. He, he'd been a safety in high school and an outside linebacker his true freshman year. He's got more of that Mike backer attitude. Second down. Andrew Clare runs for a first down and more. Out near midfield, hard nose running, finally wrapped up and brought down. Diamador Lenore. And Brady Breeze with a tackle, but another terrific run by Andrew Clare. And watch Clare just churning his legs, running through contact. He's only about 200 pounds. He runs with some force. 28 yards for Clare already is 47 on the ground in this first quarter. They keep it on the ground with Clare, and he gets into Oregon territory. Troy die in on the tackle. Along with Austin Follow. There's a, a finite difference for the defensive front of Oregon where within this scheme that Jim Levitt runs up front, you're called upon to hit blocks and hold the point of attack. Sometimes I'm seeing them getting off those blocks a little too soon, trying to penetrate and not really condensing the hole. Ravion Hargrove went in motion. Empty backfield for Jared Dagey. Coming back with the catch and a huge tackle with draws a flag on Hargrove. And that was Troy Dye a little over aggressive there. It certainly looked violent. I'm not sure he got the face mask. He got plenty of neck <laughs> and probably some face mask at the end there too. If you're looking for an example of hogtied, is that it? Was it Jack Tatum back in the day that was famous for those? And a few other things. <laughs> There's no foul for face mask. The tackling player had the runner by the neck. No foul. Okay. You saw it right away? You didn't think he had the face well, mask. Well, like I said, it looked violent. And I understand why initially the, the officials are a little bit awestruck by it. Bowling Green, another impressive drive. Bryson Denley, the ball carry. And not much running room. Troy Dye there with Folliou and Apello. And what Troy Dye did on that play was he approached the line of scrimmage more quickly. Once he read run and the back started to declare, he immediately started to step forward to make the play at or behind the line of scrimmage. That's part of the growth he'll need to continue to make as a Mike backer, not waiting on the back to advance on him. Final minute of this opening quarter. Amadi on the blitz, it's picked up, and the pass broken up, and it's incomplete. Justin Hollins thought he picked it off, and there's the emphatic incomplete side from the crew. As Hollins made a diving attempt, as reading the play was Javon Holland. The Ducks are going man across the board, snap after snap. They're showing a lot of confidence in this secondary. That's a good call. There's it the is. ball on the ground. Holland is a true freshman. They're really excited about him. Keith Hayward was raving about him with us yesterday in our meeting with the co-defensive coordinator. The freshman Holland from Pleasanton in the Bay Area. Third down, Andrew Clare, and he drags Folly <laughs> with him, and he's brought down shy of a first down, but he, Austin Folly is 6'3", 285, and Clare was dragging him. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if they go for this shorter fourth down from the field position, but as I mentioned, Clare continues to turn his legs on contact every time he gets a carry. And Clare averaged four and a half yards after contact last season which was fifth best in the country overall a school record 6.8 yards per carry and no surprise here fourth and short they're going from it on the ground jordan scott swallows it up also justin hollins but a great job by big number 34 to bring down andrew claire and a turnover on downs by bowling green there he is right there on the interior, able to penetrate at the point of attack, moves one blocker out of the way, then goes and eats up Andrew Clare in the backfield. It's hard to get skinny in a gap when you're 330 pounds, but Jordan Scott makes it look easy. 
a big defensive stand for the Oregon Ducks, who this is their best starting field position of a drive today. Their own 33. This could be the final play of this first quarter is Herbert, the handoff. And it's Verdell with his first carry. And he gets rustled out of bounds near the 40-yard line, which should take us to the end of quarter number one. C.J. Verdell, the redshirt freshman from Chula Vista, gets eight. And we've reached the end of one at Autzen Stadium as Bowling Green with the lead at the end of 15 minutes. They're up 10-7 at number 24, Oregon. Season opener here at Autzen Stadium. Starting the second quarter at Autzen Stadium, Justin Herbert and the Oregon Ducks in Bowling Green and Justin Herbert finally got going on that last drive. Only three out of seven passing the football, but the majority of those are drops. He got the chains moving with his legs at one point and threw this dart 33 yards down the field for a touchdown strike. That got Oregon right back in the game. Bowling Green out gaining the Ducks 159-92 in that first quarter. It's second down for Oregon at their own 41 as we start the second. C.J. Verdell. First down, Ducks. Tackle by Roland Walder. The transfer from Kentucky. What I liked about that run from Verdell was the defender on the end stemmed down inside the tackle, and he was able to see that and read it, made a nice cut. Play action with Verdell. Herbert, wide open, too high. Jacob Breeland would have walked into the end zone. This is one of the few misses that was certainly on Justin Herbert. Breeland came wide open on a nice route combination. Just let him a bit too much. Breeland tried to stretch out for it, couldn't quite get there. Second down 10. In the pistol and C.J. Verdell with a flag down. And Verdell runs close to a first down, maybe enough. Brandon Harris on the tackle, but will check the flag back to the line of scrimmage. Offside, defense number nine. That is declined. Excuse me, that penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. Roland Walder was offside, and so Mario Cristobal showing us it's how do you replace Royce Freeman looks like by committee so far so good with the committee of running backs the offensive line starting to impose their will more in the game opening up running lanes Ryan Bay the motion man feet getting tangled in the backfield and the tackle to Justin Herbert <laughs> as CJ Verdell and his quarterback got their feet knotted up before the play could get going. This will continue to be a work in progress because the pistol is fairly new to this offense. When the back again is coming from directly behind the quarterback, Justin Herbert's steps need to be different. The running back steps have to be different. Trouble with the snap out of the pistol. Herbert racing to the outside. And he steps out of bounds inside the 40 yard line. Shoved out by Clint Stevens. Coming from outside in, nice physical block, but legal. Didn't go above the shoulders. Brandon, Brandon Schooler. Well, he's used to laying the wood to people, playing on the other side of the football previously in his Ducks career. Of course, his brother, Colin, will play tonight, Arizona. Taking on BYU. Down in Tucson is Herbert, quick hit. Right near the marker should be enough on the slant to Kano Dillon, the grad transfer tight end from South Florida. Kano Dillon, who was hurt early in camp, really has come on to Mario Cristobal the last couple of weeks. Herbert on play action. And it's broken up and nearly intercepted. Oregon fans wanted a flag. As Montre Gregory, the senior corner, checked the, the left arm here. He did hook him on the shoulder a bit, so it wouldn't have surprised me if that got called. But, you know, I'm a defensive guy by nature. I think overall, fairly good coverage. Receiver didn't separate. 
Tried to get it to Dylan Mitchell. Second down for the Ducks. At the Bowling Green 32, C.J. Ferdell picks his way down to the 25. It's a different running style for the backs when they're offset versus when they're behind the quarterback. There's an injury as Cam McCormick leaving the field, the sophomore tight end from Bend. Last year all Pac-12 academic. And they're taking him off on the cart, which is usually not a good sign. C.J. Verdell hit at the line. There's a flag down. Nice surge by Jerry McBride, the junior safety. We'll check the flag. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number two. Refusing to comply with official corrections and leave the game for some violation. Penalties have been instituted all. So unsportsmanlike conduct against Clint Stevens for refusing to leave the game. Again, a uniform violation. And now Mike Jinks getting the explanation. As wondering if it has to deal with the length of his pants, which are by rule have to cover the knee. And they there must be a knee pad in there. Mike Jinks over there getting him right. First down, C.J. Verdell inside the 10, moves the pile forward to about the 8. C.J. Verdell getting a chance now. We've seen Brooks James, Travis die. C.J. Verdell will probably see Darian Felix at some point. Cyrus Habibi Lakio. On the rollout, Herbert for the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon, Dylan Mitchell. Second touchdown pass for Justin Herbert. The roll action cuts down the read of the quarterback, but also you can tell it gets Justin Herbert in a rhythm. He throws with that rhythm and timing so well while he's on the move. So after a slow start for this Oregon offense, they have scored touchdowns at each of the last two possessions, getting down 10-0. Zach Emerson for the extra point. And it's 14-10 Ducks. And we are back in Eugene. First weekend of Pac-12 football continues live from Autzen Stadium. And how about this, a chance to catch up with the Oregon Athletic Director, Rob Mullins, who is a busy guy. You've got 20 sports under your, uh, under your control, about 450 athletes, but guess what? He's got a new responsibility, the new chairman of the Playoff Selection Committee for College Football. How in the world will you manage all of this and that? Well, obviously my first priority is here, but it is an honor and a privilege to serve as the CFP Selection Committee chair, obviously. And, you know, you can't do this if you don't have a great staff, Lewis. Right. And I have an outstanding staff that takes care of everything here. And the CFP staff gives us the incredible resources and support to be able to do both. It's an incredible undertaking you have. And I want to ask you, as you look at the schools and how their schedules are and what have you, tell us about your strategies. You guys uh, schedule your non-conference teams because you're already scheduled all the way out to 2030. Yeah, we're way out there. You know, we've had a philosophy of, you know, we obviously play nine Pac-12 games, one of the toughest leagues in the country. And we've always added another Power 5 conference game. You know, so we've played Tennessee. We've played Nebraska. And in the future, we have Michigan State, Ohio State. Right. Uh, so that's important to us. And then we can look at it for a regional FCS and then a group of five. And on a day like today, after all the meetings and planning to sit out here and enjoy this at Austin Stadium, what's it like as the AD? Well, I mean, obviously opening weekend of college football is like a holiday. And to be out here on a beautiful day at Austin yeah. with a packed stadium and so much energy, it's, it's why we're in the business. Rob, congrats on the honor. Good luck with managing all that, huh? Thank you. Appreciate you guys being here. Go Ducks. All righty. Thanks so much. Rob Mullins, guys. All right, Lewis. Yeah, that is a big chore when you're the head of that committee. We're going to get to watch him on a weekly basis after the, uh, the season progresses a bit here. The college football playoff selection process is going on, and the weekly rankings are coming out. He's been a busy man the last few seasons having to hire some football coaches, considering that's something they're not used to up in these parts. 
Third coach in three seasons, Mario Cristobal. 2018 Oregon Ducks is breaking a tackle and trying to string it to the outside. Andrew Clare brought down by Jordan Scott. But of course, Mark Helfrich. Then the one season for Willie Taggart. And now Mario Cristobal, who was on the staff of Willie Taggart, is the offensive coordinator last year. Taking over as the head coach. And thought of Oregon football, you thought of a stable coaching situation, considering yeah. Rich Brooks was here for so long, Mike Bellotti. Scott Miller goes in motion on second down. Jared Dakey steps up, dumps it off, incomplete, trying to squeeze it into Claire on the outside, who is covered by the redshirt freshman. As Jalen Jelks applying the pressure, but Isaac Slade Matuatia. Well, Jalen Jelks returns as the leading pass rusher in the Pac 12 conference, not in terms of sacks, but in terms of QB hurries, QB hits. Bradley and I was second to him. Third was Justin Hollins. A couple of really nice edge rushers on this team. And now on this down, it looks like we'll get an opportunity to see Jelks rush from a two-point stance. It's not something he's done a lot of. Third down. Dagey hit for the blind side. The ball pops out. Oregon says they have it. Hollins coming in with the pressure. And Jelks recovered for the Ducks. If you're an offense behind the chains, these are not two guys you want teeing off on your QB. Justin Hollins barely got touched with a simple dip of his inside shoulder. Left tackle Lorenzo Taborn had no shot. He laid the wood on Deggy. Oregon recovers at the Bowling Green 21 and Justin Herbert. After the offense managed just nine yards on six plays in their first two drives. Their last two drives have resulted in a couple of touchdowns, 18 plays, and 130 yards. First carry for Darian Felix, and he's inside the 15. Eight more for Oregon on the ground. Brandon Harris on the tackle. So after a slow start, for Oregon down 10 nothing Darian Felix first and goal Oregon down to the six and they're moving the point of attack rocks this offensive line is really getting churning now it, it's it's different and we'll get a chance to take a closer look at the pistol versus the offset back as we keep moving forward here but as quickly as the back advances on the defense while that hole opens up there are the numbers last year for Oregon is Mario Cristobal the dunks have it going now looking for more up 14 10. Kickoff week presented by Opus Bank and after Bowling Green jumped out to a 10 nothing lead Oregon has got it going now they're up 14 10 and they have a first and goal at the Bowling Green seven yard line for Mario Cristobal's debut. Yes, he did coach the Vegas Bowl, though, as and he was named the head coach before the Vegas Bowl. Regular season debut. Yeah. As the Oregon coach, of course, six years at FIU. Herbert keeps, and he slides and takes a little bit of a hit as he went down at the five-yard line. And a wise decision for Herbert to get down with Jerry McBride creeping in. We've seen a couple of quarterbacks this week, haven't we, who need to focus on staying healthy, not taking unnecessary punishment as runners at the Utah game Thursday night. That was a little bit better of a slide than we saw from Tyler Huntley. <laughs> I'm still not calling it a slide from Huntley, though. Darian Felix straight ahead, down to the one. There's a lot of experience on this Oregon offensive line. But there's a true freshman who's in at left tackle right now. Pene Sewell, who's one of the top players in the country. He's in there holding his own as well. Struggled a little bit early in the game. And now they're running the rock. He's really getting going. He's 6'6", 360. Freshman from St. George, Utah, down in the southern part of the state. Herbert keeps Herbert. 
into the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. Two through the air, now one on the ground. Eight career rushing touchdown for Justin Herbert. We'll call him Colossus. Basically just turns into a QB lead. He takes all 235 pounds and dives it into the teeth of that Falcons defense. The fumble results in a touchdown for Oregon. Zach Emerson for the extra point. It was 10-0 Bowling Green. And Emerson makes it 21-10 Ducks. The number 24 Oregon has found their gear. After a sluggish start, and Justin Herbert has the Ducks up two scores. The big O up 21-10 as the mighty O got down 10-0 and now up 21-10 on Bowling Green. We'll see. Mike Jinks and the Falcons have an answer here after a really good start. But then Oregon does what Oregon can do is they can get after you and they can strike in a hurry. And that's what we've seen from Justin Herbert in this Oregon offense. And part of the, the air raid offense where Bowling Green was having success early was not because they were chucking the football to sideline to sideline. There was some of that, but it was because of their ability to move the ground running the ball and all the success that Andrew Clay was having early. Zach Emerson to kick off. Amadi having to hold with the win, knocking the ball off the tee. And staying in the end zone is Ravion Hargrove. We'll come out to the 25. And we go to the studio with Mike Yam. All right, Rox, I can tell you that I already miss you. I feel like it's only been a couple hours since we were together. It's an Opus Bank Studio update. We check in on UCLA and Cincinnati. The Bearcats actually up by a touchdown. That changes, though. Casimir Allen, 74-yard touchdown run for him. The significant news in this game, Wilton Spate getting knocked out with an injury. Dorian Thompson-Robinson getting some burn right now. He's 4-5 or five passing, good for 23 yards. A little different when they, burn, they keep huh? him in the studio, you know? Yeah. <laughs> He'll be on the road throughout the year, though, with the pregame. So there is the losses for Oregon State and Washington from the 25. And it's on the ground, and it is Andrew Clare out near a first down for Bowling Green. You know, Joe Salave is going to have some corrections he wants to make when they get in at halftime. An Oregon player shaken up. While the medical staff attends to the injured Oregon Duck. We'll step aside. Lamar Winston was the injured duck. He did walk off the field under his own power. And getting looked at by the athletic training staff of Oregon on the bench is Mario Cristobal's team now leading at 21 10. Second down and one after Andrew Clare picked up nine yards on the carry. Bowling Green looking to get back on track offensively after a good start. And they keep it on the ground. And that will be a first down for Bowling Green as Bryson Denley brought down by Troy Dye, but a run that moves the sticks for the Falcons. It does a couple of things. It gives your defense a little bit more time to rest. Continues to keep the opposing defense off balance with Bowling Green's offense. At the 36, Nagy's 8 of 12. And again, the handoff, it's Bryson Denley. Had just five carries last year, the high school track All American. Jordan Scott running off a big club on his right hand. We saw earlier in the game and Lewis reported they were working on that right hand. Initially, they just taped a couple of fingers together. Apparently, that wasn't enough to get the job done. So now he's got what we D linemen call a Q tip. Did you ever have hand. to play with one of those? Oh, yeah, several times. It's not fun. Do 
you got an inch, it's pretty tough to scratch, huh? Would be. <laughs> Dengue to the outside. Diving catch, Scott Miller. He's had a terrific first yeah. half. Sixth catch for the senior. Scott Miller came to play. He's made a lot of catches like this throughout his career. Looked like the ball touched the ground slightly, but didn't appear that he ever lost control of it. Seven yards to make it third and three. Four receivers for Daggy. Lobs it. And it's incomplete. Hit the back of Amadi and Miller looking for a flag. And the pressure was effective that time. It sped up the process of Jared Daggy. Will Chuku Amadi was one on one. He never did look back for the ball, but also. Didn't have any impeding contact with Miller, the wide receiver. Deggie knows if he could have floated that out a little bit further in front, Miller would have had a chance at it. Grant Tinnerman, the sophomore on the punt. This will be his first career punt. Amadi back to return, standing at the Oregon 15. And that is a short punt. A wobbler that takes an Oregon bounce. Say that again. Finally stops right near the 45. That is a 12 yard punt as we send it to the studio and Mike for another update. Some good Oregon luck there. All right, Gatorade Studio Update. Alabama, the number one team in the country, matching up against Louisville. Tua Tagovailoa. How about that to Jerry Judy? I feel like we've talked about that quarterback competition a little bit. Tua 9 at 12, passing 170 yards, and the tide right now rolling 21 zip. All right, Michael, Oregon is starting to roll here. They're up 21-10 as Herbert, here's the give. There's a flag, two flags in the play. As Tony Brooks James may have been brought down by the face mask. That one not nearly as violent as the Troy Dye hit earlier, but as we quickly found out. But this Troy one was illegal. Actually, it was. Or at least we think it was. Personal foul, face mask. Defense number nine, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Roland Walder called for the face mask. Yep. Pretty that's, obvious. That's accurate. Walder, one of the most athletic edge defenders that the Falcons have. And this is a new defense for Mike Jenks in Bowling Green as Carl Polini was hired to be the defensive coordinator. An entire New staff on that side of the football after the struggles they had defensively last year. Herbert adjusting. Johnny Johnson the catch. Fighting his way. Is he in? Yes. Touchdown Oregon. 40 yards. Herbert's third. TD strike. Continues to turn his legs. Johnny Johnson would not be denied. We'll see. Very close. Of course, review every play. Zach Emerson for the extra point. Let's see. He's got three defenders. Moving on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is now under replay review. And that shoulder elbow area is the first thing to go down so there's no knees or shin to worry about his hip doesn't come down first so there's, there's a much as much advancement as Johnny Johnson could really hope for with the football being cradled under his arm before any other body part could declare him down do you think it stands I think it does stand because so far I'm not seeing any angle that I would say definitively shows with any indisputable nature that the ball isn't across the goal line. Here's one more look. It's Clint Stevens trying to drag him down along with Jamari Bozeman. And there is Johnny Johnson breaking the plane. Question is, did he touch down before? I remember the ball itself doesn't necessarily need to be all After the way review, in. The ruling on the field of a touchdown stands. Touchdown. That was a quick and easy one. Touchdown, Oregon. 
So the Oregon touchdown drives. A minute 52, then a really long one at 2.55. A minute 35, and that one was 55 seconds. That's what Oregon does. They strike quick. Zach Emerson for the extra point. And it's now 28-10 Ducks who are down 10-0. Mario Cristobal getting it rolling. Let's watch him work here from the pocket. It'll be clean again. And this will be another release that takes him right up the numbers. There's not a lot of trajectory on the pass. And so Herbert has to be supremely accurate with the delivery because he's not putting much air under the ball. There's not an opportunity for the receiver to adjust to it on the run. He goes back shoulder, just flicking it directly above the ear of the defender in a trail position. Herbert's the leading returning quarterback in the Pac-12 with a clean pocket. Averaging over 11 yards per attempt anytime he aired it out last year. And you got to love the effort from Johnson. Three different Falcons trying to keep him out of the end zone. He kept working. Oregon for the 10th time in the last 11 seasons ranked in the AP top 25 to start the year. And they've won 20 of their last 22 at home when they have been nationally ranked. And overcoming. A rough start down 10 nothing but it's now 28 10. Defense getting the act forcing a turnover in a short field. Justin Herbert three touchdown passes and a touchdown run. Emerson to kick off with a holder. Ravion Hargrove inside the five. Flag comes flying in from well across the field. And we'll see if this will back up Bowling Green. During the return, the illegal block in the back, return team number 22, 10-yard penalty, it'll be Bowling Green's ball, first down. Robert Jackson Jr. called for the illegal block, and for Bowling Green, Anthony, what did they need to do to try to get going again offensively? With well, the amount of time remaining in the half, there's still over seven minutes left, so they don't need to get back into their hurry-up mode yet. Their defense could use a blow, so I think Continuing to use Andrew Claire, maybe not only in the run game, but the screen game, because that pass rush from the Oregon Ducks has started to get going here. You want to find some way to take some starts out of the opposing D. Backed up to the 11. Jared Dagey. Play action. Under pressure and is sacked. Austin Folly and Jalen Jelps combining. And back inside the five, they bring down Dagey. These guys are just creating chaos in the pocket, snap by snap now. Outside move from Jelks. Follow you. Able to use those levers with violence. Getting home, finishing at the QB. Second down, 18. Bowling Green back at the three. Tip trying to get it to Miller. That's tough duty on a quarterback. They left Hollins unblocked. So both blockers end up folding down inside. Hollins just able to calmly hop up into the air, deflect the pass. Justin Hollins, a senior from Arlington, Texas, has been active. Third and long. Daggy slings it out. Miller. And Miller. Pushed out of bounds by Javon Holland. A creative play by Bowling Green as they get some breathing room, but it's fourth down. They get 16 when they needed 18. It's out to the 19. It at least does allow for a more comfortable punt formation. You don't have your punter back on his own end line. After a miserable first punt. For Grant Tinnerman. Amadi back to return, standing at the Oregon 45. 
And Bowling Green with a timeout. Timeout, Bowling Green. 5.46 to go here in the first half. Coming up, it'll be the State Farm Halftime Report. Kickoff week continues. Highlights in this one, plus scores and highlights from around the country. They'll break down second half. Big games going on later tonight. Arizona State, the Herm Edwards debut against UTSA at Sun Devil Stadium. And Kevin Sumlin's debut as Khalil Tate, the Wildcats, will take on BYU. I referenced the continuity this program was able to keep with a new head coach. Kevin Sumlin, certainly a new offensive staff coming in with him, but defensive staff with Marcel Yates staying in place. Last four possessions for Bowling Green. Turnover on downs, fumble, punts, three and out. Now punting for a second consecutive series and a high snap. Tinnerman has trouble with it. And it's a safety in Oregon. Gets a big special team play and a Bowling Green miscue. And Tinnerman did everything he could with it. All floats way over his head. James Carroll in the high snap. That's 30 straight points for the Ducks. Well, if it did rain at Austin Stadium, it would be pouring right now all over the Falcons. After that 10 nothing lead they had, starting the game out. They were feeling good. You saw them on the sideline. <laughs> Camaraderie was at an all-time high. There was a strong vibe and energy coming out. Mike Jinx's sideline. And there was a lot of frustration and just, it looked like some anger on the Oregon sideline. But the script has been flipped and now Oregon's feeling good about the way they're going. Times have changed down at field level. And you, you, you tend to see these things in week one. That's part of what you come to expect a bit. We saw some similar activities on Thursday night where Utah took Utah a bit to get going. Utah was down 10-0. A couple of early turnovers by the Utes, and then they steamrolled Weaver State to a 41-10 win. And slow start here for Oregon. But now they found their stride. From the 20, a kickoff for Bowling Green and Nate Needham. Travis Dye back to return the kickoff. Skips and the freshman picks it up, looking for a seam. And he gets out near the 40. Well, Justin Herbert has had his hand. And a lot of points scored today. Slow start, only one of four throwing the football early in the game. Since then, five out of eight. Three passing touchdowns, had a rushing touchdown there as well. He has been cool, calm, and collected in the pocket. And after some drops early, his receivers have started to make plays for him on the outside. At the Ducks, 39. So Herbert is six of 12 through the air, three touchdowns, 92 yards. He's also had a handful of drops already from his receivers. And on the ground, it's Tony Brooks-James fighting out to the 44-yard line. Oh, yeah, they have him, too. <laughs> so many backs that just get to rotate in for carries here. Josh Croslin on the tackle. And Oregon quickly on the ball. Jalen Red in motion. Herbert all day now steps up. Nobody open and he's sacked by Roland Walder. He had a ton of time to throw the football, but nobody was open. And finally, the pass rush got to him. It seemed like there may have been an opportunity on the wheel to try to throw it up to Hashmark. Decided he didn't like the look of it. Tucked it under. And that's one where, you know, maybe if he's able to change the trajectory, turn the ball over, he would have had a shot at the pass. They're down 11. Herbert, screen to Tony Brooks-James. Has a lane. Brooks-James down the sideline. Cuts it back. Brought down inside the 10. 
Brandon Harris finally with a tackle for Bowling Green. We're going to get right back over the ball here. But very nice block he got down the field from Jalen Red after TBJ was out in the open field. 53 yards on the dump off. First and goal to nine. Tony Brooks James down to the five. It's a simple on the screen. tackle. Sorry, partner. Simple screen pass. Defense into the backfield from there. TBJ gets the Jets going. Nice block he gets from Jalen Red. Turns up about another 15 yards afterwards. Cyrus Habibi Lakio checks in at running back. And he gets his first carry. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. The redshirt freshman from Mountain View in the Bay Area. First career carry, and Cyrus Habibi Lakio gets a touchdown. There's a level of physicality, not just to the offensive line, but when you're advancing on the defense that quickly as a running back, it gives you momentum to run through contact. Zach Emerson for the extra point. And it's now 37-10. Oregon, the Ducks have ripped off 37 in a row. Maui Jim, view is better from here. And the view is better from the end zone for Oregon now. Boy, you talk about a turn of events here. Well, the Duck is going to be exhausted by the time we hit the... <laughs> The halftime locker room. I think Lewis should start doing push ups with the duck. I bet he can hang right there with him. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Me, not so much, but Lewis, <laughs> I'd have faith in. I thought about it for a moment, and then I saw the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> and we're only in the second quarter, Lewis. Exactly. Zach Emerson will kick it off for the Oregon Ducks. Ugo Chuku Amati holding with the breeze blowing here at Autzen Stadium. And Bowling Green's got to be a little shell shock right now. And Hargrave will go to a knee. It'll come out to the 25. Mario Cristobal's debut going well and. Pac-12 got off to a good start. Tyler Huntley in Utah. Their defense was phenomenal. On Thursday night, they took care of Weber State. Then Stanford behind J.J. Arcega-Whiteside last night. What a night for the Stanford receiver. As they pulled away from San Diego State, Steven Montez was magnificent. And a huge win for Colorado as they destroyed Colorado State. And Bryce Love was certainly held well under control by San Diego State. K.J. Costello. J.J. Arcega Whiteside, they got it rolling through the air. 226 on the board. From the 25. Andrew Clare on the ground. Justin Hollins, Troy Dye on the tackle after a short pickup. Inside three and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. And a second quarter that's been dominated. The guys in the Oregon yellow. Not to be confused with your average everyday yellow. It is Oregon yellow. A lot of the fans decked out in the Oregon yellow as well. And a carry for Andrew Clare. Oregon saying they came away with it. As coming away with the football with Keith Sims. But the officials so the play was dead. Forward progress had been stopped. Well, they've done a nice job. As I agree the forward progress was stopped by Claire. But they've done a nice job of some situational slants. They've moved the defensive front. And it's not always calling them directly into where the run play is. But 
They're not stationary just hitting blocks anymore. Harvey Marlowe, the third in motion. And that is a lateral. And Bryson Denley hit behind the line and dropped. Jalen jumps. Jumps is 6'6", 250, but he moves like a guy who could play a variety of other positions. Get him in a two-point stance here. It's a nice look at the versatility he has as an athlete. Those long levers. He's not just sitting there wrestling with the offensive tackle snap after snap. Loss of seven. Tinnerman on the punt again. Had trouble with the snap last time. It was a high snap. Better snap, but a low line drive punt that bounces and takes a bowling green bounce. It appeared to be touched by an Oregon player, but the Oregon player may have been blocked into the ball. And it's a pile up, and Bowling Green says they have the football. It is. And it is the long snapper, James Carolyn, who comes up with the football. The officials are discussing. Now, when did it hit an Oregon player? Was the Oregon player pushed into the football? On the field, is that the kick was touched by the receiving team and then recovered by the kicking team. First down, Bowling Green. Initially, as Carolyn was covering it, a little fancy footwork to avoid the ball. It doesn't touch him first because if it would have hit Bowling hit, Green initially, it hit Javon Holland. Carolyn jumps on the football at Bowling Green at the Oregon 43. Trying to get some momentum back. Jared Dagey toward the sideline. And out of bounds is RB3, is what they call him. RB Marlowe, the third. First down, Bowling Green at the 31. Pickup of 12. I think they need to find some more ways to get the ball to Andrew Clare. He hasn't touched it as much lately, aside from just being a ball carrier. He can catch it out of the backfield. Here he is. Picks his way inside the 30, down to about the 28. Jelkson follow you on the tackle. Bowling Green, it is their 100th season of football. And what is Bowling Green State University, yet they're known as Bowling Green. But not Bowling Green State. BGSU, as I like yes. to call it. Empty backfield for Dagey. Inside, a minute to go in the half. Bowling Green needs six. And it's Scott Miller out of bounds at the 20. It was a nice pass from Dagey. Some good anticipation. Had to throw it a long ways as well to get it outside the numbers to Miller. No need to rush. Bowling Green wants to be the last team to possess the football in this half while putting points on the board if they can. Eight catches now for Scott Miller. 51 and a half seconds to go first half. Dagey keeps. Miller another reception. And jukes his way inside the 15 out of bounds. Pushed out by Holland. Nine grabs for Scott Miller now. An effective read from Dengue. Saw the defender creeping in off the edge. Just allowed to ride the mess point on that RPO fake. Box down, 44 seconds. At the 13. Dengue for the end zone, and it's incomplete. Tried to get it to Derek Pudavon. The six foot five receiver is locked up with Diamador Lenore. Nor was voted the number one athlete in the nation as he came out of high school a couple of years ago. Not Bowling. the longest corner, but big and physical enough. Bowling Green has missed on their last five third down attempts after hitting on three of their first four. Play clock inside ten. Jared Dagey on third and three. Andrew Clare. Shy of the first down, he gets the 12. 
Alana Apelu on the tackle along with Dive for Oregon. And that call indicates to me this is four down territory. And a timeout for Bowling Green with 23 seconds left in a half, but it's fourth and two. So Bowling Green in Bowling Green, Ohio, out of the MAC. Some of the notable alumni, Earl Hershiser. And the great Nate Thurman, one of the best centers in NBA history. Rick Ocasek is a Bowling Green foul. The cars. Hershiser defeated your A's, right? It's well, week was one, it, man. Was it the 88 World Series? Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah. Make sure I got my facts straight. Not that it still hurts. Bernie Casey is a Bowling Green Falcon, by the way. Huh. Yeah. But you can see why Mike Jenks is very excited, especially about some of the young talent that he has on the offensive side. We got some guys who can play. They come up with on fourth down. Fourth and two. Marlowe in motion. Dakey on the move. Scott Miller, the catch, pushed back, should have the first down. Javon Holland with the tackle. And it's first and goal, Bowling Green at the nine. Quickly on the ball. Dagey may spike this, and he does, to stop the clock with 15 seconds left in the half. They've been using a lot of pocket movement on this drive with Dagey. They got to a point where Oregon was just starting to tee off on him constantly being in that same location behind the center. So getting into more of the sprints and the run pass option so he can move the launch point on his own in a predetermined sort of manner. Second and goal. Bowling Green, two of three in the red zone today. Four receivers and Andrew Clare, the running back. Pressure coming. Daigie gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. Scott Miller could not hang on. And that's not the worst thing in the world, although they do have, or they do not have a timeout. So that was actually worked out in Bowling Green's best interest because it stopped the clock, and he would, Miller would have been shy of the end zone. You see the difference in how the pressure, when Oregon brings additional rushers, it's certainly affecting the pocket and affecting Jared Daigie in a different manner now. Than it did early in the game. So again, with no timeouts, Daigie cannot afford to take a sack on third and goal. Daigie for the end zone, open, and it's caught for a touchdown by Andrew Clare. The running back slipping out and getting into the end zone. Second TD pass for Jared Daigie. And did Bowling Green need that in the worst way? It was really well executed by Bowling Green. It took some patience from Daigie. He went through his reads, looked over the middle, but he knew the entire way. His safety valve was where he wanted to go with the football. Andrew Clare had to go back shoulder. It's a really nice grab, especially for a running back. Nate Needham for the extra point. Ten plays, 43 yards for Bowling Green to find the end zone. With six seconds left in the first half, and... Needham gets the extra point. That ends the run of 37 straight points from the Ducks. Now 37-17, Oregon. And one more look at the touchdown pass. Right, so eventually, he'll come and wheel out of the backfield. But it's the eyes of Jared Deggy that force the defense to think he's looking over the middle. Maybe he's looking to the wide side of the field. That's why you don't immediately see Troy die go with his responsibility, which is the back on the swing route. As Troy dies looking back, thinking Daggy's going to go somewhere else with the ball. That's where the eye discipline of the quarterback makes the play most effective. Mike Jinx, Bowling Green, tough season last year. And talking to him yesterday, he's excited about this year, but really feels that his program's a year away from really making noise. They, they can challenge this year in the MAC, but he really feels next year's when they're going to really have an opportunity to win. Big. And for multiple reasons, because a lot of the talent he has offensively is so young. He's got a true sophomore quarterback, a true sophomore running back. And he knows the talent he has on that side of the ball. Defensively, starting to recruit more talent on that side. But then also, this is the first year in the Carl Pellini scheme. 
entire changeover defensively for Bowling Green. They were off to a good start until late in the first quarter. And there's the pooch kickoff from Needham. And it's dropped. And there's still time on the clock. Who has the football? It appears that Oregon got it back. And luckily for the Ducks, Hunter Kent Boyer jumped on the football, and Oregon has it with three seconds left in the half. Would have been worth just calling for a fair catch just to feel a little bit more comfortable in fielding it, as opposed to trying to field it with the knowledge that the coverage team is going to come trying to clean your clock. The Ducks, one last play here, as they punted on each of their first two possessions of the ball game, but... Scored touchdowns in each of the next five as Tony Brooks James a big run out to midfield and it's halftime in Oregon the 24th ranked Ducks up 37 17 after getting down 10 nothing to Bowling Green here in the opener at Autzen Stadium They found the rhythm and Justin Herbert in the first half three touchdown passes and a touchdown run And Lewis Johnson standing by with Mario Chris. Let's go, go, go. Coach, you guys give up a touchdown late this half, but can you talk about the way the team bounced back from being down 10-0 early? You know, started slow, had a couple opportunities to make some big plays. We did not convert on those, but then won five straight series and it really got things going. Here at the end, and again, a special teams blunder gives them the ball in our territory. We give one up, we got to come back and play better football. All right, Justin Herbert has really been lights out early, uh, in this first half. Does he continue to play deep into this game if the offense continues to roll like it has? Well, you know, as long as they keep scoring points, we got to keep scoring points as well, so we'll keep playing winning football as best we can. I got you, Coach. Thanks very much. Thank you. Roxy? All right, Lewis and Justin Herbert and the Ducks up 37-17 at the half. And a terrific first half for Herbert, even though numbers might not say it, but he was really good, and so was Oregon. Halftime in Eugene. Now to the studio and the State Farm Halftime Report. Second half kickoff week presented by Opus Bank, number 24, Oregon, leading Bowling Green. 37 17, along with Anthony Heron and Lewis Johnson. Roxy Bernstein with you. Moments ago, Lewis caught up with Mike Jinks, the head coach of Bowling Green. Your well, Coach, let's talk offense first. You had some nice momentum early in the game, late in the second quarter. How do you recapture that now? Well, we got to go back to the basics, and we got to continue to run the football. And, and because those tackles, those defensive ends are giving us fits. One-on-one, -on -one, we'll have a little trouble, and the best way to slow those guys is continue to run the ball at them. So uh, we'll continue to do that. We'll commit to the run, and we'll continue. The kids doing a good job of getting the quick game off. We'll stick with a little bit as well. All right, on defense, you've got a challenge you're dealing with their passing game and then the run game. What are the keys here in the second half? Early on, we slowed down and run a little bit. But the bottom line is we can't give up the explosive plays. We got to make them earn it. We can make them earn it. We give ourselves a chance for them to make a mistake. So uh, that's our focus. That's what we talked about at halftime. And let's go see what we can execute. All right, Mike. Thanks very much. Thanks, Lewis. All right, Lewis. Those big plays hurting Bowling Green as Oregon got going in the second quarter is the kickoff from Zach Emerson results in a touchback out to the 25 for Bowling Green. And welcome up to the booth along with Anthony Roxy with you. And Oregon, a slow start. What did you see, Ant, that got them going there in the second quarter? Well, a lot of other players on the field started to step their game up to the level that Justin Herbert was playing at a lot of the first quarter. He had some drops from some of his playmakers on the outside. He continues to deliver the football with extreme accuracy. And the offensive line really started to get that ground attack churning as well. Right now, 131 rushing yards for Oregon's offense. That's really what drives them overall is the ability to rush the football and then the passing lanes open up from there. Oregon's offense, first two drives, nine yards. The next five, all resulting in touchdowns, 250 yards. As that play, the handoff to Andrew Clare, and not much there. Jordan Scott was wearing that club now on his right hand with the tackle. Those are no fun. Because you, you want, as a defensive lineman, to be able to utilize your hands, your fingers, to 
get your hands inside on an offensive lineman. And when you extend to jack the leverage up of the blocker, you likely are trying to grasp that breastplate somewhere. And you can't do that when you have your hand wrapped in a Q-tip. Second down 11. And it's a draw for Andrew Clare. And Oregon swallows him up. Right into the line, Jalen Jelks, Jordan Scott get up from the pile. And it's third and long for Bowling Green. Jared Dagey in the first half, 15 of 23, 125 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Ten catches for Scott Miller in the first half. And on third down, you would think that's who Dagey will be looking for. He's in the slot. And the pass, and it's picked off by Amadi. Ugo Chuko Amadi cuts it back. Touchdown, Oregon. Sixth career interception for Amadi, the senior from Nashville. And the pick six. And it's 43-17 awaiting the extra point. The Ducks saw this coming the whole way. Troy Dad was right there in the passing lane. And the ball sails over the head of the intended wide receiver. Ugo Chuku knows what to do with it after he catches the ball. Gets those legs to churning like a choo-choo train. Has a convoy leading him to the paint. 38 yards on the pick six for Ugo Chuku Amati. And Zach Emerson nails another one. 44-17 Ducks. Amadi's pumped, and Oregon's rolling. Kickoff week for the Pac-12. It doesn't get any better. Intercepted again. Pick six for the Bears. Gardner Minshew is dealing. Touchdown! How did he hold that one in? How? Not gonna get out of there. Auburn will win over Washington by five. Interesting opening weekend, but still some action to go. And the Ducks, after a little bit of a slow start against Mike Jinks and Bowling Green, now up 44 17 as the pick six is Jared Dagey. Intercepted by Ugo Chuku Amadi, who takes it back to the house. Emerson to kick off again. And the Oregon defense tonight caused a fumble, turnover on downs, and now a pick six. So the defense getting into the act. Ravion Hargrave on the return, or Hargrove rather gets to the outside and pushed out into the Oregon bench. The defense for the for the Ducks is to take the field again here. Like the the progress of the defensive front early in the game. Andrew Clare was able to move the ball on the ground. The offensive line for Bowling Green seemed to have some things going. Some slight adjustments that were made. Got the defensive line on the move a little bit situationally. That Bowling Green line couldn't just come off and target them in the same manner. Jim Levitt's defense has turned it up. Andrew Clare brought down shy of the 30 by Jordan Scott. And Troy Dye is third game for Bowling Green ever against a Pac-12 opponent. 0-2 coming into tonight. They Lost to Washington back in 1986, and then the next year they played Arizona, losing to the Wildcats. They'll have a couple of more non-conference matchups with Pac-12 foes coming up. They'll play UCLA in 2022, and then Arizona State. They'll make a trek to Sun Devil Stadium in 2026. Daigie off the play action. It's complete to the outside to Quentin Morris. And Morris gets out across the 40-yard line. Fourteen yards and a first down for the Falcons. So Dagey, the sophomore, made five starts as a true freshman last year. Bryson Denley with the carry. Short pickup, Jordan Scott, another tackle. He might not be able to grab people, 
but he can fall on. He do that very efficiently, and even with that club on his hand, one of the things he's still been effective at is the ability to penetrate into gaps. You see last season, 96 missed tackles, which was the fewest in the Pac-12 the year before that, before Jim Levitt got here to the Oregon defense, had the second most missed tackles in the Pac-12. So many improvements for the Ducks last year defensively across the board. Again on the ground, Bryson Denley and the sophomore brought down right near midfield by Nick Pickett. The hallmark of any great defense is how many hats you get to the football. You see here in frame all the yellow jerseys that continue to pursue some of the drills you tend to do in practice is you know, things you'll call tap the hat where you want to make sure you're getting all the bodies you can into the frame when you're evaluating the film to see how your defense pursues. Denley stays in a running back. Dorian Hendricks coming in as a fullback as Dagey barking out the signals here. Play clock inside five. Off the corner, Amadi coming, and he gets him. Ugo Chuku Amadi, a sack for a loss of eight. Amadi can play virtually anywhere within the secondary. Even in some situations, he'll be more of a linebacker. You'll see him come from the slot defender, just in the same manner that Cheetah Bay Wuja used to do when Jim Levitt was the defensive coordinator at Colorado just a couple of seasons back. He's got a similar frame and a similar game. Third sack for the Oregon defense. Amadi now back to return, standing at his 15. Grant Tinnerman with the punt. A decent punt this time. It takes a bowling green bounce. And it goes inside the 15. So Justin Herbert, he's coming back. As the Oregon quarterback is having a big night, will look to keep it going. The Ducks in command early in the third. The Pac-12 leading the nation with over 500 NCAA championships. The Conference of Champions, as somebody likes to say. Kickoff week presented by Opus Bank. Oregon deep in their own end. And it's the first carry for Taj Griffin. The sixth different ball carry we've seen for the Ducks. As the senior from Powder Springs, Georgia, gets out across the 15. So we've seen Tony Brooks James, Travis Dye, CJ Ferdell, Darian Felix, Cyrus Habibi Lakio, and now Taj Griffin. It won't surprise me one bit if Taj Griffin breaks off a big run. Well, there's a screen to Taj Griffin. And Taj Griffin could be off to the races. Oh, he is. He gone. Touchdown. 83 yards. Late in the high school career, early in the collegiate career of Taj Griffin, suffered a lot of injuries. But he has always had speed to burn. You give him a lane, and that similar refrain to DeAnthony Thomas, he's gone. The Ducks have put up 50 in Mario Cristobal's debut. And Zach Emerson on to make it 51. We're still pretty early in the third quarter. And Emerson nails it. 51-17 Ducks. Four touchdown passes for Justin Herbert. But the speed, Taj Griffin. Fifty-one seventeen. Justin Herbert dumps it off and Taj Griffin does the rest. It's about time one of these playmakers helped Justin Herbert's numbers tonight. <laughs> Four touchdown passes and a touchdown run. The easiest pass completion he had all day ended up being the longest one. Fifty-one seventeen is Emerson to kick off. 
Herbert now with 228 yards passing. And Ravion Hargrove on the return. Looking for a lane. Brought down as he crosses the 15 yard line as we go back to the studio and to Mike Yamp. All right, Roxy, time for an Opus Bank studio update. Under two minutes to play between Cincinnati and UCLA. The finishing touches. Michael Warren, his third touchdown of the day. Chip Kelly, guys, he suffered seven losses in four seasons as Oregon's head coach. Picks up loss number one at UCLA. Tough day for the Bruins and Chip Kelly's debut as the UCLA head coach with Lewis Johnson's Cincinnati Bearcats. Knocking off Chip. And you see And Wilton Spate being injured in the game. It's a big deal. First down for Bowling Green. Andrew Clare. Brought down by Slade Matuatia. You wonder at a certain point in the decision making process for Mike Jinx. When does he start to roll some new players in? Because, of course, today's result. Won't affect what they're doing in the Mid American Conference schedule. Andrew Clare tripped up by Trayton Carlberg there, and rather deadly on the carry that time. But next week they're hosting Maryland, and Maryland had a big win today. And right. it'll be a whiteout for Bowling Green next week. But Maryland Terrapins had a, a pseudo neutral side game where at FedEx Field where the Redskins played, and where they play, and they knocked off Texas today. It's a big game for Maryland, a very emotional day for them. The Texas team that's expected to do big things this year. Timeout, Bowling Green. Timeout, Bowling Green. Their first charge timeout of the half. Coming up for Oregon, you and I and Lewis will be back here next week as the Ducks will take on Portland State who has struggled at the FCS level. And then a couple of weeks, Brent Brennan will bring the San Jose State Spartans north up to the Willamette Valley from the Bay Area. And tough loss for them in their opener in a shootout against UC Davis. And Dan Hawkins on Thursday night, Montel Aaron, quarterback, put up decent numbers for San Jose State. Both those games will be on Pac-12 Network. And look, Ann, we've heard the criticism of Oregon's non-conference schedule with Bowling Green, a team that won two games last year, Portland State next week, and then San Jose State. And this was not supposed to be the case. Texas A&M originally was on the schedule this year, and Texas A&M backed out of an agreement. Now they had a clause in there which allowed them to do so, as on third down, Bowling Green was able to get just enough to move the sticks in a first down. But there was a clause in the contract with Texas A&M that the Aggies could get out of the deal if they switched conferences. So they were able to get out of the deal when they left the Big 12 and joined the SEC, which left Oregon with a huge void to fill. It was a decent sized check that had to be cut as well. But when you look at trying to reform a non-conference slate that close to the, the start of the season when it was the decision was actually made, then it's very difficult to get another top flight opponent. We know Oregon in their non-conference is known for playing nationally ranked foes. Jordan Scott was getting looked at. Went off the field as Bryson Denley, the ball carrier, to the 30-yard line. And speaking of the non-conference opponents, and, and Rob Mullins talked about this with Lewis earlier, the non-conference slate, which they're scheduling into the future as far out as 2030 with a home-and-home -home with Michigan State. They just finished a home-and-home -home with Michigan State recently. But Baylor, Texas Tech, they're going to play the neutral site game against Georgia, which I, I, it's not a neutral site, right? It's it about never an hour is. From Athens. It never is with the SEC. Even but, uh, facing State? Auburn next year in Arlington, Texas, it's not as close as Auburn going to Atlanta like they did today with Washington. Auburn will actually have to get on an airplane, unlike hopping on a bus and going 90 minutes. Daigie fires to the sideline, coming back. It's caught first down. Quinton Morris. For Bowling Green out across the 40. But there's enough offense on this team where you look forward for Bowling Green next week when they face Maryland. It'll show on film between guys like Jared Daigie, Andrew Clare, Scott Miller, even some of the other 
younger skill position talent they have. Looking for Miller. It's broken up and nearly intercepted as it's dropped by Troy Dye. I'm just seeing the all around game. Look at the depth that Troy Dye ends up getting. I mean, unfortunately, on this particular snap, he has hands like feet, but before that moment, the coverage was stellar. He was actually ranked in the top five by PFF College as both a run defender and a pass defender last season. Give an assist to the umpire there, Timothy Schroeder. Kind of nudged Troy Dye. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> Troy Dye would have had another turnover for this defense. Second down, the inside give, and it's Andrew Clare. Last year, Claire averaged nearly seven yards a carry, brought down by Austin Foley. And that was a single season Bowling Green record. He averaged 6.8 yards a carry last year. One point at four straight 100 yard games and got up to a slow start, didn't play much early, and really hit his stride as the season progressed last year for Bowling Green. And his conditioning was part of the reason for that. A lot of times, true freshman running backs come in, and it's difficult to become. A real workhorse type of ball carrier. Third down, Daggy, and it's incomplete for RB Marlowe. There are various ways you can defend the pass. <laughs> we saw a moment ago the pass deflection from Troy Dye. Look at the pass rush he's bringing off the edge here. Bull rushes the tackle, runs him smack dab over, and then lays heavy on the quarterback. He to me is my preseason pick for Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. There's just so many fun things he's going to be allowed to do in this defensive scheme. Grant Tinnerman with Ugo Chuku Amati back to return. It's Tinnerman with the punt. Ugo Chuku Amati on the move. And he's spun down right across the 20-yard line. Oregon gets the football back in a commanding lead. Sun setting here in Eugene on this Saturday night. And we are back live in Eugene, and sometimes the story says it's just in your blood and it's just meant to be. Oregon quarterback Justin Herbert, not just playing, but now the face of this program, and it's like the people in his life groomed him from birth for these moments. Christmas 1998, there he is, nine-month-old Herbert in the hands of Lynn Casanova, the iconic head coach here at Oregon from 1951 to 66, later the athletic director and a man revered by anyone who loves Oregon football. One of Justin's grandfathers, Rich Schwab, a wide receiver at Oregon from 1960 to 63. And then the other, Roger Herbert, there they are, both instilled the passion for Oregon football from birth, according to Holly Herbert, Justin's mom. And from the seats in Section 12 here in Austin Stadium, that's exactly where the family has held season tickets for many years. It's where the Herbert brothers grew up, watching the Ducks, and now it's Justin meeting his destiny down here on the field. Quite an amazing story, guys. Herbert on second down. All right, Lewis. Pass incomplete, trying to get it out to Kano Dillon. Actually, Herbert on the sideline now as Braxton Burmeister is taking over at quarterback, but an impressive season opener for Justin Herbert tonight. It certainly was. I mean, he's got a receiver core that had the fourth highest drop percentage in the Pac-12 last year, so he's dealt with that before and some of the drops that happened early in the game, but his demeanor allows his teammates to not be too frazzled by that. Herbert averaged 28 and a half yards of completion tonight as that pass out to Dylan Mitchell for an Oregon first down. And half of his completions went for touchdowns tonight. I was struck by the story that Mario Cristobal was telling us yesterday just about how Justin's demeanor is becoming a, a bit more forceful. You know, not, maybe not necessarily fiery, but more of a forceful guy. There was a practice during training camp this year. And for whatever reason, it just the offense couldn't get humming. It was a big day for the defense. And then the following evening, the players got together and called a players only meeting. And by the time they came out of that meeting, he was struck by the fact that so many players came out of the locker room. And they just, you know, certain comments to the coaches said that Justin Herbert was the lead voice that really got them rallied. Braxton Burmeister's pass incomplete for Johnny Johnson. And from a result standpoint, next practice they had, 
everyone was humming. Everyone was churning. They had a different level of energy and focus to them after they got a talking to from their quarterback. Nearly intercepted there by Clint Stevens. So Burmeister, the sophomore from La Jolla. Initially, the plan was last year to redshirt him. But with the injury to Herbert, as Burmeister incomplete out for Kano Dillon. And Oregon was forced to take the red shirt off with the struggles at quarterback in the absence of Herbert. And Burmeister tried to hold it down, but it was a lot to put on the plate of a true freshman last year. Yeah, I mean, the year before that, Justin Herbert had become the first true freshman starting quarterback at Oregon since 1983. And then the very next year, Braxton Burmeister becomes the next true freshman quarterback to start at Oregon since 2016. It's Justin Herbert. <laughs> Blake Maimon will punt. Just the third punt tonight. His first since early in this football game. Marcus Milton back to return. Low line drive from Maimon and Milton sidesteps. Versus field. Trying to turn the corner. And then helping him out of bounds was Brendan Schooler. Time for our 76 fueled moment presented by 76. It was initially fueled by a clean pocket. Great pass protection from the offensive line and watch Justin Herbert go to work. He's releasing the ball. The receiver isn't even open yet. Then Jalen Red separates from the defense. Quarterback incomplete. Kismet with wide receiver. That's a big time throw and PFF College had Herbert rated as the number one quarterback in the nation with big time throws from a clean pocket. There are the differences with and without Justin Herbert. Average nearly 50 points a game in the opening month. 40 points through November. But struggle without him in October. From the 19 for Bowling Green, Bryson Denley, the ball carrier. Isaac Slade, Matu Atia with the tackle. Second down eight for Bowling Green. Remember when it was 10 nothing Bowling Green? It's like, ah, oh, all right. <laughs> Got ourselves a game here. And Bowling Green was feeling good. Oregon offense was stalling early. And then Justin Herbert got him going, and the defense picked up as well. Daggy's pass, it's complete. Derek Putavong out across the 35 and a first down. Khalif Halasi on the tackle, the freshman for Oregon. 16 yards to Putavong. Mike Jinks was telling us throughout fall camp that Pudavong was probably the most improved player, definitely the most improved receiver that Bowling Green had. And he likes the way he's been coming on. It could be a nice compliment. Scott Miller has had a big night receiving for Bowling Green with 10 catches. From the 37, Jared Dagey on first down. Looking for the deep ball down the sideline and in stride. Scott Miller, touchdown Bowling Green. Second touchdown catch for Miller. This one a 63 yarder. On that particular play, they did bring an additional rusher. Blitz didn't get home in time. Let's watch Miller. It's a nice crossing route, just a scissors concept. Stair steps. Steve Stevens. And he shows the Jets to take it all the way. That's what Bowling Green prefers to do. They'll work lateral snap after snap and then look for opportunities like this to attempt a strike play. Quick strike for the Falcons going 81 yards in a minute 26. Nate Needham for the extra point. And Needham makes it 51 24 Oregon. And Scott Miller certainly the bright spot tonight for Bowling Green a huge night. For the senior from Barrington, Illinois. And he's the leader of the receiver core, not just in his productivity, but in his attitude verbally. When, when you're running the air raid and you've got a lot of receivers out there on the field at the same time, sometimes you need to get people lined up. Sometimes you need to 
let folks know when it's time for a motion, when it's not. It's a well-thrown ball by Daigie. Scott Miller's going to have a lot of big numbers this season in this offense, especially because Daigie seems to be such a talented young passer. Seventh career 100-yard game for Miller. As a sophomore, at a career best 161 in a game against North Dakota. As a sophomore, was first team all Mac, and then last year was third team. His production down a little bit. Well, we mentioned the numbers that Oregon had with and without Justin Herbert last year. He's got the helmet back on. He does. He's hiding those luscious locks of hair. He's grown throughout the offseason. Jared Nagy from Bowling Green, they averaged 35 points a game in the final month of the season once he got back into the lineup. Their touchdown pass for Davey tonight is Needham with the kickoff. And they try the short kick, the pooch, and coming up on the move and then getting leveled but hanging on for Oregon was Hunter Kempmoyer back up tight end as we send it to Mike Am in the studio for an update. All right, Roxy got a pretty quick score down to the desert. It's a Gatorade Studio update. Opening drive for ASU. Manny Wilkins, Nikhil Harry, making the argument he's the best wide receiver in the country. 58-yard touchdown, turning on the afterburners. Two grabs, 79 yards already in the game. Sun Devils up, 7-zip. Good start for the Herm Edwards era. And when you've got... Arguably the best receiver in college football. Get him the balls. Justin Herbert back in the game. And this is Travis Dye on the carry. Brought down shy of midfield. By Colby Coleman, the linebacker. So Burmeister comes in for a series. And now Herbert is back in. Well, Mario Cristobal did tell Lewis Johnson going into the locker room at halftime. If we keep giving up points and Bowling Green keeps scoring, we're going to have to keep scoring ourselves. Travis Dye gets the first down into Bowling Green territory. Josh Croslin with the tackle, along with Jonah Harper. It is interesting he didn't give Burmeister perhaps consecutive series. Pistol look at the play action for Herbert. Throwing. And there's a flag down on the play, and Mitchell was the intended target broken up by Fred Garth, the senior safety. But we'll check the flag as Dylan Mitchell turned the other way. Holding defense number four. Ten yard penalty. Automatic first down. And Fred Garth called for defensive holding gives the Ducks another first down. Well, another ill-timed penalty for Bowling Green. Some of them have been on their offense. Some have been defensively. It's the fifth penalty of the game for the Falcons. Spots it at the 35 of Bowling Green. Travis Dye tries to spin it to the outside. Marcus Milton on the tackle after a gain of eight. Final two minutes of this third quarter. And Oregon, the Ducks, in their 13 game home winning streak in openers. They've averaged 57 points in those games. Nice open field tackle by Colby Coleman on Travis Dye. Ends up triggering into the backfield. Just a great form tackle. Nice wrap up. Third and short. One more time for Dye. This time it results in a first down. Josh Croslin, another tackle for Bowling Green. But there's the record in their last home non conference games back to 2004. And there's Penny Sewell at left tackle. That's the true freshman. We referenced him earlier as one of the top recruits in the nation. Loss of one this time for Dye. Brandon Harris on the tackle. And there were a lot of evaluators who thought maybe Penny Sewell would end up moving because of his size and his girth moving from tackle, which he played in high school, and bumping inside the guard. And Mario Cristobal told us, you know, maybe it crossed our mind because of what some other folks said, but I viewed him, being Mario Cristobal, as a tackle pretty much the whole way. 
Play action for Herbert. And it's Jacob Breeland with a catch, and he's pushed out of bounds inside the 20. And he's got a lot of experience on that offensive line to lean on. When you look at, okay, Shane Lemieux on his right as the left guard. He's started all 26 games now of his Oregon career, the junior. Jake Hansen has started all 26 games of his career, the junior center. Dallas Warmack, the new right guard, a grad transfer from Alabama, who has two years to play here at Oregon. And then Calvin Throckmorton, who's at right tackle, is probably the most versatile lineman. But like Lemieux and Hanson, he started all 26 games of his Oregon career as Red drops a touchdown. They only drop passes when Herbert's in, huh? <laughs> <laughs> We've reached the end of three at Austin Stadium as Oregon, 24th ranked Ducks. Carry a 51 24 lead to the fourth. Kickoff week is presented by Opus Bank, the official bank of the Pac 12 Conference. 76, we're on the driver's side. And by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Beautiful Saturday evening of the Willamette Valley. 51 24, number 24, <laughs> Oregon leads. Bowling Green. Look at that sunset. Just spectacular. Gorgeous up here in Eugene as we start the fourth and the Oregon offense on the move. They've lit up the scoreboard and looking for more. Fourth down for Justin Herbert. Over the middle and it's intercepted. Well read by Marcus Milton. Six career interception, three last year for the senior from Pickerington, Ohio. Well, it was great coverage by Milton. He engages with the receiver and then there's just no in cut from Jalen Red off the route. He basically runs directly into Milton and then doesn't come inside. Herbert's expecting him to run a post, and he doesn't get his eyes whipped around to the ball at all. That's just another unfocused moment from a wide receiver from a pass off the hands of Justin Herbert. So Milton, who's wearing number eight, which is normally worn by David Konowalski, who's a valuable member, a senior on this defensive line who was injured in camp. And a likelihood Lost for the season for Bowling Green. There is the possibility of him trying to get another year as another catch for Scott Miller, who's out near the 20. 12th catch for Miller in this game. But Marcus Milton now sporting the number eight. Honoring his teammate. Twelve catches, 161 yards for Scott Miller, which is tied at career best in receiving yards. Is Deggie incomplete, trying to get it to Quentin Morris? There's certainly going to be enough on this film for Mario Cristobal and his staff to coach from as you look towards next week. When you have these season opening games, you know, it's one thing for, and we talked about this a bit on Thursday night in Salt Lake City, where, you know, if you go out there and you get up early and you start to lose focus and things get sloppy, that's, there's more meat on the bone for your coach to try and drive you into that next game. Short pickup to Andrew Clare. It brings up third down. So in theory, you prefer every game was perfect but it does tend to allow you to keep the attention of your players more consistently if it's obvious that they've made mistakes. You go back to our game Thursday in Salt Lake City, where Utah got down early. Turnovers were a problem for Kyle Whittingham's team. Yes, they won 41-10, and their defense was dominant, holding Weber State to less than 70 yards of total offense, but he had enough in the film, which you're talking <laughs> about, to get his team's attention. It certainly does. And they'll play against a MAC team on the road. They'll play Northern Illinois next week. As there was a timeout taken before the snap. Timeout. Bowling Green, their second timeout of the half. 
This will be a 30 second timeout. Timeout for the Falcons. So here is the Oregon schedule, which we alluded to. Portland State, San Jose State, both on Pac-12 Network coming up the next couple of weeks. Then the schedule gets interesting. And we'll know a lot more about this Oregon team when they play Stanford in week yeah. four. As Stanford had a good win over San Diego State last night, despite Bryce Love being bottled up. Right. They started slow. But then you got Cal on the road, your first road game. And Justin Wilcox, the former Duck, and the Golden Bears had a nice win at home. A terrific defensive performance against North Carolina in Berkeley today. Then you've got, after a bye week, a huge matchup with Washington right here. The schedule will certainly just get tougher and tougher. I think uh, at least the first few weeks of the month of September, there won't be too much for Ducks fans to worry about. On third down, Daggy. And a big hit on Miller, who hangs on after Matrell McGraw buried him around the 25-yard line. And Miller will slow walk into the sideline after his 13th catch and a new career high in receiving yards. And McGraw had a beat on this one the entire way, and Scott Miller did a phenomenal job holding on to this one because he took a thump from McGraw. Oh, yeah. Pads popping on the opening night. Amadi back to return again for Oregon as Tinnerman will punt. Ugo Chuku Amadi lets it bounce. Sideways and it goes out of bounds. And Oregon with the football. 12.48 to play the Ducks. 51. Bowling Green 24. Time now for our CDW well-orchestrated play. This one involved a number of different ducks executing at a high level. Taj Griffin going to get the ball from Justin Herbert. Look at the offensive lineman. Hanson, Warmack taking people out in space. And then once Griffin gets into the open field, nothing but space, opportunity, and taillights. Justin Herbert in the Oregon offense. Back on the field at their own 32-yard line. 12.48 to play. Along with Anthony Heron and Lewis Johnson, Roxy Burnson with you, our Pac-12 Network crew on this opening weekend of college football at Austin Stadium. Number 24, Oregon and Bowling Green. Second down for the Ducks. Herbert has thrown four touchdowns tonight. He's run in another. Left the game briefly, then came back as Braxton Burmeister got a series. C.J. Verdell, and he's hit behind the line in a tackle for loss. Kyle Jr., nice play. I must say, things certainly have been, even though there's only one penalty in the game, Oregon hasn't had a penalty since midway through the first quarter. But just from an execution standpoint, it hasn't been clean. It, it's, it's been sloppy at times from an execution basis offensively. How much do you chalk that up to being the opening game? As Herbert incomplete, trying to get that one out to Dylan Mitchell. My impression would be that there's multiple reasons for it. The opening game is definitely a part of it because you tend to see that just a lot in college football. When there's a, a team who has their opponent overmatched, they start a little bit slow. But even once Oregon began to build some momentum and they started to make some more plays befitting of what you expect from this offense, it was still inconsistent. They sort of plateaued and now things have leveled off again. Tom Snee getting a chance to punt now for the Ducks. Just over 12 minutes to play. Bowling Green will get the ball back. And Snee with a nice punt. Fair catch called for. And Marcus Milton gets hit, and there is a flag. Hockey Woods Jr., the senior from Chicago. Former J.C. All-American, spent two years at Indiana State. That was certainly a fair catch signal. He started to throttle down. 
kicking team, number 12. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So free 15 for Bowling Green. Oregon, a little sloppy play, but still a big over the Falcons. 51-24, number 24, Oregon leading Bowling Green. Exactly 12 minutes to go here at Onsen Stadium as the Falcons have the ball at the 40-yard line after the personal foul call and the kick-catch interference on Hockey Woods. Jared Dagey has thrown three touchdowns tonight, the sophomore. Under pressure, racing away from Hollins, but goes down. Dagey did get rid of it, but again, there's Justin Hollins creating havoc in the backfield. I mean, nobody likes a bully, but you're still out here playing football. Their starters are on the field, your starters are on the field. You have them in a scenario where you know they're going to continue to throw the football. That's just their offensive philosophy for the most part anyway. So moments like that from Justin Hollins, Jalen Jelks, you need to continue to impose your will and close the door on this opponent. Second down, 10. Andrew Clare. Some shifty maneuvering to the outside. And Clare, a nice run, gets shoved out of bounds in Oregon territory as there is an injured Oregon player that's down on the play. And that's Jalen Jelks, who is slow to get up, is up and walking off the field. 17 yards for Clare. It's a nice cutback. The vision's there. This is a really talented running back. I agree with Mike Jenks. He described him as a power five talent. He was right. And Jenks thinks he's a guy that will play on Sundays when his playing career is done at Bowling Green. He certainly got the skill for it. Daggy over the middle looking for Miller. It's incomplete. There is Jalen Jelks who did walk off the field is getting intended to. And so, you know, folks could look at this and there, there may be Oregon fans wondering, well, why are our starters still in the game? And th that's, you know, certainly the decision of Mario Cristobal and, and Jim Levitt and the, the coaching staff. But the starters for Oregon could have put this to bed more so than they have. So it's certainly on the players as well. Russell down and the carry for Ravion Hargrove. Austin follow you along with Troy Dye. And moments like this, I mean, the, the reps are important that they're getting right now just from a fundamental standpoint. You want to, you know, try and make sure you're, you're learning to play the game consistently at a proper level physically. But the intangible part of it, that, that extra heartbeat that you want to play with in every big moment, getting consistency there is why these moments are important also. Jelks, Jordan Scott, Collins die at least eight tackles apiece tonight. So the playmakers have been active for Oregon defensively. Daigie to the outside, and it's caught. Jordan Wayne Prather. JC transfer from Antelope Valley Junior College in Southern California. Brings up fourth down for Bowling Green at the 40-yard line. And so just putting my coaching hat on, you know, I'm, I'm in the mind frame of where I'm sure Mario Cristobal and his staff will be as they get into the week of preparation for Portland State. They're going to win this game by decision, but that knockout blow was possible multiple times, and they haven't landed it. Empty backfield for Dagey. Looking for the deep ball, and it's well overthrown. Trying to get it to Derek Pudovong. And a turnover on downs by Bowling Green with 9.56 remaining. And we'll see how Oregon plays this offensively here up 51-24. Well, so far, what have you seen from Oregon in this one? I've seen a lot of skill. And, you know, we talked about the demeanor of Justin Herbert and some of the growth that's been there. Even without a fiery speech or, or yelling or doing anything rah-rah, I've, I've seen intensity and focus from Justin Herbert throughout the night. I've seen that inconsistently from his teammates, though, especially 
the skill position guys on the outside needing to catch the ball more cleanly finish routes later in this game Herbert throwing it's tipped and it's intercepted Fred Garth with the pick for Bowling Green well, second career interception and the second interception for Bowling Green of another, Herbert. Another look at it here, partner. But uh, to me, I, in live action, this looks like another route that maybe wasn't finished as well by Jalen Red. Well, and, and that one, upon further review, the last route that led to an interception, that one certainly wasn't finished as well by Red. This one, defender probably tugged at his shoulder a little bit and then made a deflection coming back shoulder on him. Herbert just 9 of 20 with those four touchdown passes, but two interceptions. From the 45. Andrew Clare. And not much running room. Drayton Carlberg closing in, along with Kalana Apelu. But you know what it was like in this stadium? You know, regardless of who the opponent was, once. The Ducks got rolling once that tempo had that Autobahn pace to it and they were putting points on the board. They had a way of stepping on people's necks where the starters had no reason at all to still be on the field at this point. And so those are the types of lessons that you're going to want your players to learn from a night like tonight. Jared Dagey under pressure and just throws it away and it's intercepted. He tried to throw it away. And what a play on the sideline by Troy Dye. Dagey thought he had enough on it just to chuck it into the sideline, but Troy Dye said, no, -uh, I got this. The redemption song of Troy Dye. Hands like feet earlier this half. Hands like swan here. And he dragged that second foot oh, just yeah. in case. Watch him work. Extends away from the body. Nice soft mitts. High points at a bit. Soft little toe tap. Toe -tap. Oregon gets the football right back. Felix, first down ducks inside the 40. Clint Stevens brought down Darian Felix. Here's the play differential, and you don't normally see this. Right. Darian Felix again. Well, that pile's moving now. Offensive line looking like they might be a bit fired up here. Haven't seen them driving the folks off the ball in a couple of series like they have been these first two snaps. Inside the 35. One more time, Darian Felix breaking a couple of tackles. And the pursuit, Clint Stevens. Finally brought him down with help from Jonah Harper. And there were some moments earlier in the game where I've, I've been talking a lot about the pistol, and we'll, we'll get into that quite a bit here as we'll have the Ducks on the Pac-12 network for three weeks. There are some things mechanically, just the fundamentals, the steps, the spacing, tripping over each other a bit, some confusion at the mess point. That's what I see is just the first game miscommunications, those types of things, but drop passes or misprotections. Those are the types of things that are more focus-based. Good protection for Herbert, Jalen Red. Flag down in the secondary area, but it came in late. Maybe an illegal downfield block, but if the play stands, first down ducks Herbert to red, 18 yards. Pass interference, offense number 27, 15 yard penalty, replay, third down. Jacob Breel in the tight end called for offensive pass interference. Well, one of the things that they tend to look for is if you're going to run a crossing route, are you actually declaring yourself as a wide receiver when it happens? And they felt that Jacob Breeland as the inside receiver, once he went inside, didn't necessarily declare himself as a receiver, just appeared to go in and sort of block on the linebacker more, which ended up opening up the crossing route for Red. Third down, back near midfield. Third and 20 for Justin Herbert. Keeps his eyes downfield. He's got a man in the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon, Jalen Red. 
Got behind the defense. Understandably, not the most exuberant of celebrations afterwards in a half that hasn't gone as Oregon completely would have hoped. Largely because of their own doing. But when they do it well, when they execute at a high level, these plays are a thing of beauty. 48 yards on the touchdown pass to Red. The second time Herbert and Red have hooked up on a score. And that's five touchdown passes for Justin Herbert tonight. Zach Emerson, the extra point. Ten completions for Herbert tonight. Five touchdowns and two of those scores to Jalen Red. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, did Coach Feld bring anything other than a purple and a black band to do guns? The 45-day challenge on the island of Hawaii? The answer is no. No, I didn't. But did you hike an hour and a half across the ridge of a canyon to get to this rock in the middle of nowhere to do curls? I don't think so. You're sitting at home watching this video on your phone. You haven't done anything. Have you done the 45-day challenge today? Have you gotten 100 buys? Have you gotten 100 tries? Have you filled the sleeves? I didn't think so. So before you say anything about my form or about where I am or about the band I'm using, get out there and get 100 buys and 100 tries and get ready for the 2018 campaign. The always colorful Aaron Feld, the strength and conditioning coordinator for Oregon football. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> On the kickoff, here comes Ravion Hargrove. And a big hit in special teams. There is Aaron Feld, who came to the University of Oregon from the University of Georgia, where he was assistant director of strength and conditioning for Georgia football the last few seasons. And he first crossed paths with Mario Cristobal back when he was an assistant at Alabama when Mario Cristobal was coaching the offensive line. There. And they've brought some of those same fourth quarter mentality tenants to the strength and conditioning program here at Oregon. The way they drive the players. Flex Friday becoming a big social media sensation here out of Eugene. Are we going to see you get out there next Friday on the next Flex Friday for Oregon? Um, well, we're, we're at, what, about 240-ish push-ups for the duck tonight. And the duck is literally hobbling across the, the ground right now. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I got 240 in me, but I may have a little Flex Friday available. A Anthony, if you go, I'll go. <laughs> but if you don't go, I'm not going. <laughs> well, if you guys go, I'll watch. How's that for a commitment? <laughs> yeah, I'll be there to support you guys. All right, Roxy, we know you got our back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how things time up with ant bites. You know, I got to get my ant bites in. I got a full plate. Literally and figuratively. Yeah, a full plate of chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Feld still getting after it. He's the get back coach. He's the hype coach. He's the flex Friday coach. He's the cheerleader. Wall to wall energy. And wall to wall curly stash. Now he's turning into Daniel Bryan. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Maybe that'll be the next hairdo for Justin Herbert. <laughs> a third down. Charles Lamar again the ball carrier and he's brought down a yard shy of the first down. But this Oregon team, you know, there's there's a level of execution, there's an expectation associated with how they should attack opponents, how they should finish games. To me, I view them as the dark horse in the Pac-12 North. I, I think Washington's going to win the North. I think Washington's going to win the Pac-12. I picked, as I said the other night, Utah to win the Pac-12 South. I'm still not backing off of that. But if it's not Washington, to me, Oregon is right there in the discussion with Stanford as the other team that would compete in the North this season. So my expectations for this ball club are very high. I think they're skilled. Jim Levitt was raving about the young defensive linemen and the way that they've come along. Some guys who hadn't played as much the last couple of years who've taken big steps forward. Shank from Grant Tinnerman. And Oregon gets the football back. And 
The head coach is at Oregon. You know, Rich Brooks and Mike Bellotti combined from 1977 through 2008 is the head coaches. Then the Chip Kelly era. But since Chip, Mark Helfrich for four years, Willie Taggart for one, and leaving for Florida State. And now Mario Cristobal takes over. So a program that had so much stability with Rich Brooks and then with Mike Bellotti. And the last 10 years has been quite different for the Oregon football staff. And it's really intriguing when you think about the reasons why, because of course, Chip Kelly helped bring the program to national acclaim and to higher heights than folks have seen Oregon get to in a while. And so the expectation, that new bar has been set and maintained by the administration around here, which was a big part of the reason they moved on from Mark Helfrich, who's now the offensive coordinator with the Chicago Bears. Braxton Burmeister re-enters at quarterback and Darian Felix, the ball carrier. And here's the last eight seasons, Mark Helfrich and the Ducks playing for the national championship in 2014. And the disappointment of a couple of years ago, missing out on a bowl and the only non-bowl season since 2004, and then last year losing in the Las Vegas Bowl to Boise State. And that was technically the first game for Mario Cristobal as the head coach of this Oregon program. Now in his first full season, and that one just skipped at the feet of Felix by Burmeister. And nothing was there, and Oregon forced a punt. I've certainly seen things tonight just from a, a sheer raw talent standpoint that I'm very encouraged by. It's a, and this was something they started to build as Mario Cristobal, you know, he was the co-offensive coordinator last year and worked directly with the offensive line. And they started to develop a more physical mindset and, and more physical techniques with the offensive line. It made them bigger, more burly, and they have a more vertical attack with the way they block the opponent. And the pistol that they've added to the run game offensively, I think will only enhance the way their backs are able to take advantage of the bigger offensive line they work with now. Tom Snee is second punt, and Oregon will let it roll, and they touch it inside the 20-yard line, and with four minutes to go, it'll be a Bowling Green football. Well, we have a moment here. I would like to send our best in recovery to good friend, Pat Kilkenny, former Oregon athletic director, and there is PK Park all lit up. Pat Kilkenny Park over there just Beyond the stadium here in Eugene, Hudson Stadium is recovering from surgery. I want to wish him very well in his recovery and glad things are going well on the road back and hope to see Pat Kilkenny hopefully soon here at Hudson Stadium. And we'll be back here next week. We'll be here in two weeks. Wishing Pat the best and hopefully you'll see him in the near future. Here, here. Bowling Green with the ball at the 20. And they keep it on the ground. A change at quarterback is Grant Loy in the game for Bowling Green. Former walk-on, the 6'5 sophomore, takes over for Jared Dagey. The final score, breakdown of the best of the Pac-12. Coming your way, 11.30 Pacific tonight, right here on Pac-12 Network. Mike Yam and the guys in studio getting ready for the final score. Grant Loy. Academic all Mac selection last year. Played in six games a year ago. It's from New Washington, Ohio. Where Loy was a three sport standout, including playing basketball for his dad, Phil, who's a hoops coach. Maybe on Hargrove, the ball carrier. You were mentioning the final score. It's been a yeah. big week for Yammer. Finally hitting the road with the pregame. Let him out of his cage. Yeah, that's going to be fun to watch. Mascots are still getting along. That's cool. The Falcon you know, and the Duck. Do you know Mike Yams coming up later tonight? He is? Really? Yeah, 1130, the final score. Check it out. But did you see him on the road? They let him leave the Bay Area. No, they didn't. And Nigel did, too. Yes, Nigel Burton was there also. And Toby Gerhardt and Nick Aliotti are going to be in studio with Yammer tonight. On the final score. Hargrove, another carry, and certainly Nick Aliotti, one of the guys that was synonymous with Oregon football during that. Ridge Brooks, Mike Bellotti, 
era where there was so much stability, not just with the head coaches, but the staff, like Steve Greatwood, for example, who was the offensive line coach here forever, is now at Cal with Justin Wilcox. Gary Campbell, Don Pelham, longtime assistants. It's been a changeover here with Willie Taggart, now Mario Cristobal. You think of some of the great coaches also that have come and gone, like Chris Peterson, who was here, Jeff Tedford. As Oregon gets the ball back with a minute 51 to go. Justin Herbert, you look at the final numbers and you're going, well, maybe it's not so great. But usually this is what we talk about. We just showed P.K. Park, Anthony. Yeah. About a starting pitcher. Mm -hmm. he, he pitched better than his numbers would indicate. Well, yes, Herbert did throw five touchdowns, but he pitched or he threw the football better than his numbers would indicate. Completely agreed. There, there was a feeling to me similar to, remember last year we had USC's opening game and they faced Western Michigan and Sam Darnold had his receivers out there with a lot of drops, but you could tell Darnold was playing at a really high level and just some of the inexperienced players, the skill guys on the outside were working to come towards Sam Darnold's level of execution. And that, that's what tonight feels like me a bit because Justin Herbert really threw the ball well. I mean, you know, not 100% of the time, but he's human. But I, I saw some stellar passing from Justin Herbert, not just throwing the football, but, you know, threading it in there with some touch, with some varying in his velocity and trajectory. His, his skill guys, they're, they're very skilled. They're very talented. Like I mentioned, last season there were a number of drops as well. There's, there's a focus to, to this outfit that you think if they enhance that a bit, and they're going to have a couple of weeks to continue to work on those things against opponents who can't necessarily match up with this squad physically before they really get into the meat of their Pac-12 schedule. It's going to be a dangerous team if they put it all together. C.J. Verdell with the carry. And we're inside the final minute, so Oregon put a sh put, putting the finishing touches on their seventh consecutive season opening win. And it'll make it 14 game winning streak now in home openers for the Ducks. 58 points, just slightly over the average during that span. The average 57.1 points per game in that now what's to be a 14 game home opening winning streak and they've scored 60 or more six times and they'll fall just short of that tonight but Mario Cristobal in his home debut as the Oregon head coach at Odson Stadium a convincing win after a slow start the Ducks got going and Oregon a little bit of a choppy uneven performance but still a convincing win over Bowling Green and I'd say more physical than the Oregon team I saw last season. That's a good thing. They said that was going to be the case. And I'm, I'm seeing a stronger, more physical group from a capability standpoint. Impressive talent on this roster. So the Oregon Ducks behind Justin Herbert tonight put up 58 points as Herbert throws five touchdowns, runs in another. And the Oregon Ducks, who got down 10-0, then erupted for a 30-point second quarter. Led at 37 to 10 and cruise to a 58-24 victory in their opener against Bowling Green. For my partner Anthony Heron, Lewis Johnson, our great Pac-12 Network crew, Roxy Bernstein saying so long from Austin Stadium in Eugene. Coming up now, the post-game report right here on Pac-12 Network.